Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we have got episode 44 for you all. We've got a special little episode for you with the holiday season right here and around the, right around the corner. We're in it. It is the holiday season. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see I've got the Santa hat on. Um, and that's for a very specific reason, because today we are be going to be going through a Christmas wish for all 30 NBA teams. What are these teams putting on their Christmas wish list, sending off to the North Pole, trying to get from Santa? Because I can guarantee you some of these teams need some help desperately. <clears throat> Santa is here to check if they've been naughty or nice. See what they're going to get in their stuffing because, you know, Draymond's getting himself a nice little lump of coal. Facts. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this is exciting. I, I like it. It was hard to go through um, for some of these teams, but interesting to try to see what you would add to some of these teams, what, you would, what situation change you would make to just try to put everybody in a better spot this holiday season. Um, going to get the housekeeping out of the way, as always. You are watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe to our audio platforms, five star rating, and pre download the show. Follow the socials there at the bottom as well at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. Before we get into our Christmas wish list, let's start it like we always do. How are we doing today, Dame? Holiday season, Christmas right around the corner, a couple of days away. How are we feeling, bro? Not good. I just watched my team lose to the Bulls. Not good. <laughs> Not good, I'm be honest with you, but we're pulling through. We're pulling through. It's the holiday time in the holiday spirit. So gotta cheer up a little bit, but then we also play the Timberwolves tonight. So probably not gonna be good either. Yeah, and they definitely they gotta be feeling some type of way. Joel just gave him 51 last night. So and Braun's not playing, so yeah, ain't looking good, bro. Not looking great. So you see why I have them a, a, a little low on the power ring? Because I'm like, listen, after this, I need to see it outside the tournament. And I unfortunately I was right. So yeah, yeah they've but, been they've been questionable outside of the end season tournament. Hey, the banner's up. Bro, oh my god. We don't even need to get into that one. You're not feeling the banner, bro? Bro, it's just I mean, I'm not a I'm not against it. I mean, it is what it is, but we got bigger things to play for, bro. But it just it makes the jokes. <laughs> the jokes are gonna keep flowing because of the banner and the champagne. The jokes are gonna keep flowing. Yeah, yeah, you can't duck them. I feel like I wonder if it'll ever come out if that was the decision that the Lakers made or if Adam Silver made the call. Like, nah, y'all gotta put the banner up. I think Adam Silver probably did it because I mean it definitely Lakers, it legitimizes it, right? Like it does, yeah. Cause you want to make it seem like it's legit, you know, you have a reason to play for it. And it's like the Lakers, like we have 17 banners, it's like it's not like we're desperate for a banner, you know what I mean? It's right. not like we're fiending to put a banner up. So right. I think it was like an NBA call. Yeah, that would make sense. But I, I, I can't, I can't hate on it. Like I said, I feel like it makes it makes it a little more meaningful. Yeah. For years in the future, for when a team like Indiana, for example, that don't have a lot of banners, if they could have got one, right, you know, means something. Definitely means something, something to them. It just makes the Twitter jokes <laughs> hit even more. <laughs> it definitely does. Um, with that, we're not going to waste any time because we do got to get through all 30 teams here. We're going to go in alphabetical order, I guess technically by city. So we split it up directly in half, 15 and 15. So we're just going to go back and forth. First one I have here is the Atlanta Hawks. And I think their Christmas wish would be AJ Griffin to get out of his sophomore slump. Okay. He had a lot of promise coming out of Duke. And I thought it was, a, it was a very good rookie year. I feel I think it might have been all rookie second team last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, either way, he last year was averaging uh, almost nine points, um, two rebounds and assists, um, playing about 20 minutes a night um, on 46% from the field and 39% from three. Good efficiency from a rookie. Played 72 games. Um, this year, he's – struggling to be in the rotation on a nightly basis. He's only playing nine minutes a night. The field goal percentage is below 30% now. The three-point percentage is down to 32%. Um, it's common. It happens like guys get in sophomore slumps. That's why the term exists. Um, but the Hawks have been kind of teetering in this odd spot where they are definitely, I think, underperforming where – the expectations were for this team, and they really have not been able to get back to that level of success that they reached on their 
some might call it a fluke at this point because they haven't been able to replicate it, but their Eastern Conference Finals run. Um, and they're sitting at, you know, the 10 seed in the East right now, you know, not too far behind teams like – or not too far ahead of teams like the Bulls, the Raptors, and the Hornets, which is – it's not great company to be in these days. So um, definitely A.J. Griffin, if he can kind of shake the sophomore slump, would help a bit. Um, even Sadiq Bey. Um, like kind of getting more acclimated there, but there's been some interesting basketball played in Atlanta. Trey Young's been heating up as of late, but it just is not amounting to wins for them, bro. So it's tough. Unfortunate. It's tough out yeah. there. Yeah, man. Def definitely unfortunate. Definitely unfortunate. Um, and we're going back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, I like that. I like that gift. My team, uh, my first thing I'm going to uh, talk about is the Boston Celtics. And for them, um, we talked about a lot how their roster is pretty much complete. Like, they have a really good roster and you know, one mm -hmm. of the best records in the league. So you might have asked, like, what gift can you really give the Boston Celtics? Right. And I kind of have two. I have one at first. Um, but I, honestly, the, the game a couple nights ago, actually, I guess the Warriors actually made me put this other one up here. This one is actually going to be fourth quarter execution. <laughs> Late down the stretch, needed, bro. Because, the, first of all, the philosophy. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's not like they flat out weren't attacking the basket because they actually missed a lot of like wide open layups, a lot of bunnies, mm -hmm. a lot of easy shots. But I mean, we all know their philosophy is: listen, we're going to shoot a lot of threes. That's just who we are. That's what we do. We're going to live or die by this three ball. And they, had, they actually got a lot of open looks late in that game. Um, they really just weren't hitting them. But mm -hmm. even after that, it's just like. It just seems like they couldn't execute down the stretch. They couldn't hit the, the timely shots that they needed. Um, they couldn't get the stops that they needed. So I just think in general, I guess it falls on coaching a little bit and maybe just their overall philosophy. But uh, to me, I think fourth, fourth quarter execution is a big thing for them. And then um, the other thing I did have up here is just a complete run, like a complete playoff run, because it seems like for years they've gotten close. They've gotten so close. They got to the Eastern Conference Finals. They got to the finals. They had an injury happen. They had Tatum kind of malfunction in the finals. They had so much stuff happen late in the playoffs to where, like, they just need – if they could put one thing on their Christmas list, it would just be a full-on, complete championship run. So I think that's what they're going to have on their Christmas list. Yeah, you said it. That fourth quarter execution, it, it's so crazy how it happens to them all the time, but it feels like down the stretch, bro, their offense just goes stale, like it's bad, crazy. bro. Um, yeah, and that Warriors game highlighted it big time, big time. Um, the next team I have up is the Brooklyn Nets, um, and I've got a, a pretty simple one um, for – for the Nets, I said that their Christmas gift should be a healthy Ben Simmons, bro. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. Like, I think the, the newest report came out that the nerve or whatever issues that's been going on, in, the nerve issues in his back, um, they're going to be, he's going to be out at least another two weeks before they check him again. So that probably really means like closer to three weeks to a month at absolute best if everything is like all go because, you know, they're going to have to ramp him back up to stuff. So, not, might not be looking back at him until February at the earliest. And again, that's like best case scenario. Um, and it's unfortunate because he just, what he was able to do those years in Philadelphia, like he was a special and unique player. And it's crazy to think, like we just talked about that Hawks run. Like that was before COVID. <laughs> we are, it's about to be 2024. We've not like that was the the last time we saw that version of Ben Simmons. It's like That's four <laughs> years taken off his career. Obviously, part of that was his own decision <laughs> to to not play. But this back injury stuff is no joke. Um, there's been plenty of NBA players who have dealt with back issues, and some of that has led to career ending type stuff. So, we wish him all the best and, and hopeful that he can get back healthy because. Even if you can get 65, 70% of what that player used to be, that is a high, high, highly impactful role player for any team in the NBA. So Chris's wish for, for the Brooklyn Nets, Ben Simmons coming back healthy. 100%, man, 100%. But, yeah, that's, 
it's been so long since he's played healthy basketball. And he always comes back like uh, he always acts like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm making my return. I'm going to be back. Like, I'm locked in. For those off-season pictures, bro, his PR team needs a raise, bro. He, they get the hype up every year. Every I'm year. I'm thinking he about to come in and start, ah, like jacket right. threes. Like. <laughs> and then people buy in, and then this happens every time, man. But, yeah. yeah, it is what it is, man. So, my next team, um, I have the Charlotte Hornets. And I think this one's pretty obvious. Uh, if they had a, a wish, it would be to get a healthy LaMelo ball. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe I could be wrong, but I believe it says he's been hurt there two and nine. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I really just want to read off before LaMelo got hurt. He was kind of on a heater. Like LaMelo he was. was like this last, I believe four games. He was 34, 13 assists, and eight rebounds. He was 36, eight assists, nine rebounds, 34, nine assists, five rebounds, 37, five and five. So he was on a heater. Now, don't get me wrong, it wasn't like they were like the team overall was just kind of lighting the league on fire. But obviously, LaMelo gives you a way better chance than obviously without him. So I just think that in general, you want a healthy LaMelo because he's he's been dealing with injuries pretty much kind of his whole career. Um, yeah. He's always been like nicked up a little bit. He's always been hurt. So he's never really been able to have a full on stretch of complete health. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you want to see him alongside, you know, Brandon Miller. You want to see him with the young guys you have on your team. So you can kind of see what your young court looks like as a whole. So overall. I believe if I was the Charlotte Hornets, that would be my biggest wish. It's just, it's just to get my best player back and healthy and to continue to have, like, a healthy stretch of basketball. Yeah, he need to get with Steph, man, because Steph was dealing – because this is the second year it's been an ankle injury for LaMelo. Yeah. Steph used to have that same problem, could never keep his ankles from rolling and spraining left and right. And I feel like I read that he worked some worked out some stuff. He started wearing braces. He got with the training staff. He started working with Under Armour on getting the shoes better for his ankles. Like, yeah, you need to go talk. You need to go talk to him. Go get with Puma. Better figure that out, bro. Thanks. Um, moving on to my next team, which is the Chicago Bulls. Um, I could almost keep the streak the same and just be like, healthy Lonzo Ball would go a long way for this team because that's true. When that core of Lonzo, Levine, uh, Demar, and, and Vooch was healthy, that was a playoff team. The Bulls, that great- man. <laughs> the ball Zach. <laughs> they weren't a great playoff team, but they were a playoff team. But I think um, I'm going to keep on brand with how we've talked about the Bulls really since we started this podcast, <laughs> um, which is, bro, I feel like, and Bulls fans would agree, the best Christmas wish for this team, reset, bro, <laughs> start over. What are we waiting on? Right. I, I really do think part of it is – they're waiting for, I think, I think, the next set of available players for trade for people who had just recently signed contract extensions in the offseason is, I think, January 15th. Zach Levine hasn't played in a couple weeks. Kobe White is on a crazy heater right now. I think in his last 10, he's averaging almost 25 points, six and a half rebounds, six assists. He's almost he's 48% from the field, 48% from three. Like, this Kobe White, you know, this is... He's a ball player. Facts. <laughs> so, like, bro, you 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 reset around him. Patrick Williams has been looking better defensively this season. Um, like, like there's still some some pieces at play here. You can move off of Levine. You can move off of Demar. You you know it's people that want Caruso. Like, you have assets that are in demand. Like, you gotta gotta hit the reset button. Because there, there's no path forward with this current construction for them to make any noise in the Eastern Conference. Like, this is not even close. This isn't even a playing team right now. Like, yeah, <laughs> they got to gotta blow it up. So, I know Bulls fans would agree. That's got to be the Christmas wish, is to get that Woj bomb notification that Zach Levine got traded. Yeah, they need they need a hard reset, man. Like you said, we've been talking about this for the longest, bro. It just mm-hmm. seemed like they refuse to do it. They refuse to be in this like like it's funny because like you said before, at least it was like, all right, we're middle of the pack. Like now they're right. just bad. <laughs> so it's like you might as well be bad with the future, you know? Right. Um, right. and then we also lost to them. Jesus Christ, bro. That's oh, yeah. like that was down a lot early, too. We was like, down like like what 17? I don't even they, remember. 
That's a typical we, Laker game this year, bro. Bro, <laughs> I'm, <slow. laughs> I'm telling you, bro, we was down bad. And it's crazy because LeBron came out high. He got these scored like seven in the first. Came out high. We just, I don't know. We don't need to make this a Lakers pop. No, we don't. <laughs> we'll get <laughs> but, to them. Uh, yeah, you we'll, got them. I would. I got, let me see. One, two, three, four. They got a lot of. They put a lot of stuff in their Christmas list. They that stocking getting stuff. <laughs> it, it is crazy. So, but look, man, my next team is the Cleveland Cavaliers, and um, for them, I actually have a. If they was to wish for anything, it'd be a superstar Evan Mobley offensively. Um, mm. I put that here because I feel like this Cavs team is kind of the same team that it was last year in a way, yeah. like. They're good, like they're a really good team. Donovan Mitchell is a good player. They still have a nice backcourt between him and um and Darius Garland. They're still doing their thing. They're pretty much the same players. We kind of know what they are right now, but they're not gonna go anywhere unless they get another person. I don't. I, I didn't want to say bring in another star. I just wanted to say have their young star every moment step up offensively because stats wise he's kind of been the same player. Um, he's still a great defender. Like don't get me wrong, you can't take that away from him. Mm-hmm. But just offensively hasn't really taken that huge step that I feel like that they would need to be able to compete with some of these better teams in the East. Um, and don't get me wrong, he's definitely – he's still a young player. I believe it's only, what, his third year in the league, so it's not like yeah. writing him off or anything like that or like he's not doing his thing. But I just feel like for them, in order to compete, they would need him to take on a larger role offensively and being able – and have him be able to step up and take off some of that load. Um, but honestly, yeah, I think that's their biggest thing right now is, you know, his development and making sure he can like kind of step into that larger offensive role. Let me ask you this. Cause I've seen the rumblings for this start to happen. It was there prior to the injuries because they were in this, especially before this little three game win streak that they were on, they were the 500 team, like yeah. scrapping through like would be in the play. And if the season ended and they still are only the six seed, like they're tied with Miami. Um, but the rumblings, I mean, they've always been there, too, really, of, like, is Donovan Mitchell going to resign? You know, like yeah. this is the last year of his deal. So you want to be in Cleveland. And now you have Mobley's out for six to eight weeks. Jerry's Garland has a fractured jaw. He's out for probably roughly the same amount of time. So you're probably going to be without both of them for maybe two months. So you got to think, if this stretch of the season gets rough for them, if they start to skid out, slide, like, I think they were already in a position where this wasn't a – championship contending team in the east like you could make an argument that a, a good christmas wish for them might be get what you can for donovan mitchell now for he walk for free that is true um yeah i mean because it's tough like i said it's tough in their position that they're in because like you said he really could walk for free and then you're kind of just stuck with nothing mm-hmm. will they make that mo- I, I mean it make, don't get me wrong. It makes sense. It all, a lot of these moves, it makes sense, like, just saying it out loud. But, like, are they actually going to do that? I'm right. not too sure. But like you said, it, that, that, I've seen the rumors, um, like, with him linked to some other teams or just linked to just trade rumors in general. So, I mean, that could be a Christmas wish for them, being able to just move on and see what they can get for him. But then again, it's like, where does that br- – I, I don't – I just don't trust the Cleveland organization as a whole to, like, do anything as far as like a, a rebuild, you know what I mean? Like they, yeah, they're a, the definition of a poverty franchise. Like they don't, I just don't trust them with like building a team up the right, even if it's the right way. I just don't trust them doing that. But it's definitely an argument to be made that that's the right move for them to make for sure. It's tough, and only they know, right? Like they're the only ones in the building that can talk to Spider and try to figure out where his mental is and what he's planning on doing and. Even what he says now is could be completely different. Come you can never really know June and next year. So you, well, they got like a little two month stretch before we hit the trade deadline. So I think it's something that they need to consider. Like it, it would suck because of the potential that this group had between Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell and Evan Mobley, and I'll throw Jared Allen in there as well. Like they. Obviously, like bowed out of the playoffs embarrassingly last year, but like we chalked that up, they chalked it up to inexperience, whatever. Like, if the injuries don't, you know, hurt them down the stretch and they end up being a playing team and like have a similar type of experience, like we may never see that come to fruition, which would be tough. Be um, unfortunate. So, yeah, these next two months are gonna, are gonna be, it's like make or break their season, like yeah. how much Donovan Mitchell really can carry this team by himself. Facts. Tough. 
It's tough out there. The next team on my list is the Dallas Mavericks. Um, and for them, I think their Christmas wish would be one or two defensive stoppers. Mm -hmm. They still – defense is definitely better than it was last year, which I don't know if it was necessarily hard to do because it was, like, egregiously bad last year. Uh, but it's better, but it is still, like, bottom of the pack in terms of defensive rating. They're 23rd um, in the league in defensive rating um, around – like listen to the teams that they are next to Spurs, Jazz, Pistons, Hawks, Pacers, Wizards, Hornets. Not good teams. Not a lot of good teams in that at grouping. Um, so we talked about it a couple episodes ago. Like Luca has come into the season on probably the best start that he's had. He's playing at an MVP caliber level. Um, the offense looks great. We talked about the Kyrie injury, like obviously avoiding something major there. So like they lucked out with that. But the defense needs to be stepped up a notch because people can light up this Mavericks team. And when the game slows down, you get into the half court, like having guys who can at least make it difficult on the other team scores, their best players, their stars. You get into the playoffs when the game slows down. Like those are the type of teams that win playoff series and make championship runs so you cannot just rely on overwhelming offense unless you're really tipping the deck that crazy but this is not the the golden state warriors with kevin durant it's not yeah. not to that level so um yeah i, I think they would would need to find a, a, a trade or a move to go out and get a couple of guys who can play point of attack defense because you imagine if they found a way to get alex caruso on this roster jesus christ like you can say that really about any roster. But I could you just, like, yeah, that's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> with, with this team, with how good their offense is, and he wouldn't, you know, obviously can provide spacing on the offensive side of the floor too, but just again, yeah. point of attack defense. Derek Lively is going to continue to grow. So I'm not worried about interior presence. Like that'll come with time. You don't need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. um, but put guys around him who can help him around the perimeter, get guys rotating for one another. So, um, yeah, that that would be my Christmas wish for for Mavericks for the for yeah. the Mavericks. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, like I said, definitely been improved because last year was abysmal. But <laughs> like I said, when it comes to like being a contending team and actually being able to win the championship, you're gonna need better defense than they have right now. You're gonna need right. better defense on the floor. So, um, yeah, that'd be nice for them. Um, and that team would be disgusting. If we talk about and Alex Caruso. Oh my god. But um, my next team is the Denver Nuggets, and Man, <laughs> I put nothing. They're spoiled. <laughs> You're right. What do you like, give the defending champs? The rich that, get richer. Yeah, like I don't know what to like. I don't know what to give them. Like I honestly, I put nothing. They're spoiled, and I put continued health because you know keep having Jamal yeah. very healthy. Keep, I mean, Jokic has, has been healthy, but still, like I genuinely, I don't, I don't know what to put for them, bro. They're, they're the defending champs. Um, the roster is is. It's the same as it's been. It's still stacked. It's still a complete roster. They play offense. They play defense. They have the best player in the world. They have a great number two. I don't know what to add right. for them, bro. Like, no, and they're even good. The they question, need to donate some of their stuff to, right. to some other teams. They're good. Even the question marks that they had coming into the season, like, oh, they don't have Jeff Green. They don't have Bruce Brown. Like, these are key guys in their rotation. Like, young guys are stepping up. Yeah, ben exactly. Watson is stepping up. We, we saw Christian Brown do it in the playoffs already. He's stepping up. Like, they miss a beat, bro. Right. So, it, yeah, you know, I don't know what you would give them. They're already <laughs> doing – you got it all. <laughs> They're those rich kids, bro. Like, they got all the gifts, bro. I need to donate some of your gifts to, like, Goodwill, some, some, some <laughs> other places. You're you're fine, bro. Yeah. Uh, That's funny. The next one is a good one. I've got the Detroit Pistons. Oh, God. <laughs> it's real simple. Boy, oh, boy, they need a win. <laughs> 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 like, I – a singular win. A just just for, one. Forget the future planning, <laughs> franchise, health. None of that. None of that should be on any Pistons fans' wish list. <laughs> the only thing you should be sending on that letter to Santa, bro, please, one win. Just a singular <laughs> win. They are on a 24-game losing streak. Bro, what? 24. <laughs> that doesn't even sound real, bro. 
Come on, bro. There's no way I can't squeak out. Of it. It's nobody took y'all lightly on a night. Nobody took a night off against you guys. No, and this is the sick part. The the speed at which Pistons games are over <laughs> bro, is historic. Like, <laughs> it's historic. It's crazy. They were the first game on the other night playing the Bucks. It's like a midday Sunday or Saturday game. I turn it on. I start cooking. I keep glancing over at the score. I'm like, okay, Bucks out early lead, 10-point lead, 15-point lead. They down by 23 in the first quarter. I'm like, yo, the game is over. We didn't even make it to the – we've played 11 minutes of basketball, bro. Thanks. Like, yeah, it it's, it's reaching levels of – or depths of bad that I didn't know – would be hit with this roster because when I think about the teams that like have the longest losing streaks, which for the record is 28 games between two seasons in one single season, I think it's 26 games. So the Pistons are very close to NBA history in the worst way, but those are the process Sixers. Like they were trying Trying to lose lose Mm -hmm. with bad players on the court. No core. Kate Cunningham, Asar Thompson, Jay Nivey, uh, whatever I say, story, like James Wiseman, Jalen Dern. Like, there's people here, bro. 24 in a row? That's bad, bro. <clears throat> I, I think, to me, that's the biggest part is the fact that – and I thought about it because I don't know if you've seen that that tweet that's kind of been going around with the dude. I think his name is uh, Matthew Sponhauer. He tweeted, like, which mm-hmm. is worse, being a Pistons fan or being a Panthers fan? And, like, the, my thought process was, like, Panthers, because, one, they don't have their picks. Like, you right. know, besides Bryce Young, you have nothing really looking for. Is he to, just like, talking current? Just, like, yeah, like, right now. I was about to say, right. at least the Pistons, I mean, they had a bad boys moment. Oh, and no, no, they no, got no. The, And they got the 04 chip. I was like, I don't think the Pan- Panthers are a younger franchise yeah. and never won a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. He's talking about, like, just, like, right now moving okay. forward, which is worse. And I was like, yeah, Panthers have, like, no, they don't even have their pick this year. Like they're about to get no. the first pick, and they're not even gonna have it. And then Pistons, I'm like, bro, they still have, like you said, K. Cunningham, Jaden Ivy, Asar Thompson, Jalen Duran. They still have pieces. So then, to me, that's the craziest part is the fact that they have players that I actually like, and I'm looking forward to their futures. And I think they're good players, even like right now, I think they're good players. So the fact that they are on a 24 game losing streak with these like solid pieces is kind of crazy to me. It's like, bro, you guys can't win one like you don't even have, you know not saying you got to be a good team not right. saying you got to you guys got to even be a decent team but like like you said this is historically bad for a team that should not be this bad like for 24 game losing streak bro like that's a g league team out there like didn't we say it when it was at i was when they were at like 10 or 13 losses in a row i was like no nba team has any business of losing that many games in a row no none especially you know with solid players on the team 24 like like i just said bro the teams that set the record were intentionally trying to lose right with throwing no names out there like literally people off the street in the line in the starting lineup bro y'all are you have a, a core like y'all have a legit core right and like a coach y'all just paid all this money to that's supposed to like help develop this core I don't know. He get, bro. He, oh my gosh, Money Williams is getting like 20 plus M's a year to lose 24 games in a row. Bro, and his his quotes world. after the games are getting worse and worse. Like he, it's like I don't. I, I get it's tough. Like, what do you say to the media after losing your twenty second or twenty third game in a row? But he just be like, ah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Or like <laughs> he he says something about. I think Bogdanovich came in and, and shot the ball really well. And he was like, okay, I see that he can do that. And it's like, you didn't you didn't know that. You didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, the. All Pistons fans everywhere have been complaining about the spacing for this team. And it's evident when you watch it. Like, that's why Cade Cunningham has the rough assist to turnover ratio he does. We talked about right. it. There's no spacing. He's seeing bodies every time he drives. So it's not his fault. Again, we just had the offseason where they were talking about Cade Cunningham was dogging Team USA, bro. I this don't think it's a talent. Right. It's not a talent issue. <laughs> it's not a talent issue. Bro, so, they're good, bro. They have, they have good pieces. I just – I. I don't know, bro. I don't get it. To me, it don't make sense. All the ingredients is there, bro. Somebody need to chef it up. Whoever cooking right now, I need to get fired. 
off the grill immediately. <laughs> uh, tonight may be their best chance at not setting the record. They, they play the playing, Jazz, right? They're playing the Jazz with no – they're actually favored. Like, they are a – Wow. I think a, uh, yeah, they're a one-and-a-half-point favorite on ESPN Bet. Their ESPN Analytics says they have a 61% chance to win the game because the Jazz are playing with no Keontae George, no Taylor Horn Tucker, no Yurt Seven, but the biggest one, no Laurie Markinen in this game. You lose this game, you guys are setting the record. It's no doubt in my mind. If they lose this game, they should have to go to the G League, and the best team in the G League should take their spot until further notice. 100%, bro. 100%. That is ridiculous. Also, if you ain't room for the Pistons to win a game at this point, you're sick. You're the Grinch. You're actually the Grinch, bro. Like, come on, bro. It's tough out there, bro. Just one win. You just get one. You feel bad at this point. Just get one, bro. Like, could you imagine you suiting up every night for your game to be over by the second quarter and you still got to play 36 more minutes of, of meaningless basketball, bro? To, to me, that's how it – for me, it would be hard to be a good teammate, bro, because it's like, bro, we lost in the first quarter. I'm at least going to try to get some buckets up. Like, I'm at right. least trying to, like, hoop a little I'm bit. Like, okay. Yeah, like, it's no – team basketball, fundamental, let's roll t- – nah, bro, we lost. It is five minutes left in the first quarter, bro, we're down 20. I'm getting my shots up. Like, what you want me to do? I'm going to get my shots up. 100%. So, yeah, man. It's, it's rough out here for a Pistons fan, man. It's rough. But uh, if they lose tonight against Utah, it puts it at 20, 25 straight. They have two games against Brooklyn, one home – or one on the road, one home. They lose those two, puts it at 27. And then they're in Boston to what would tie the longest losing streak to get to 28. And if they do that to prevent it from being the biggest, they would have to beat Raptors at home. All of those games sound real losable, bro. So like they every better, game is losable at this point. That is bro. true. I don't even. Yeah, <laughs> there's no point in even trying to figure it out. They then got 20 piece by the Wizards. Everything is losable, bro. Every game, bro. It so, looks losable tonight. Like it, it is very losable tonight. This this Jazz game has to be it, bro. It has to be it. It's got this is their NBA finals. This is it. This is seriously. All right. So my for my next team, we got the Warriors. And um they got a lot of stuff on their Christmas list. Okay. One of them being an anger management counselor. You know, they, they need that for big Draymond. <laughs> they gotta need a punch. They need to punch it back in the locker room so they can take the anger out. You know what I mean? They can stop hitting opposing players, their players. But they also need, I'd say, a legit number number two and number th- or number two and number three option and or a time machine because right now, I mean, even though Clay actually has been playing well uh, as of late, he's been hitting the shots as of late. Definitely not, better. Yeah, he's still not the Clay of old, and Steph still needs help. Steph still has to carry this team. They don't have a lot of help scoring the ball. Um, the Chris Paul acquisition has been like better than we thought a little bit, but it still hasn't been nothing to like move me as far as making them like a crazy contender or anything like that. So in my opinion, I really think they need a, another legit option. So Steph doesn't have to a- absolutely carry this team. Um, cause the guys they had, it hasn't really been stepping up much. And then now obviously with Draymond being out and definitely like, we don't know how that's going to go. So right now yeah. it's just kind of a dumpster fire. So I think they'd, uh, they'd wish for a legit second and third option and for Draymond to like, <laughs> relax <laughs> i think that him punching nurkic happened i think the day we last recorded it's like happened after we finished recording so we haven't talked about it on the pod i know we late but bro what's good with him bro he's bugging bro that's crazy bro this man hit a like you can't even it's a ufc it, move like you can't even try to play that off as a, a any type of basketball move like Bro just 360 clocked him like close fit bump like bro accidentally bro the fact that he was trying to like bro if I meant to do it I would I don't apologize for stuff I meant to do like it was an accident I was trying and to sell the foul it's crazy though because that that new come off is authentic like I don't it I don't do. remember him apologizing about stopping on some bonus that's fact kicking, kicking Steven Adams in the balls like I don't think he ever says sorry he, <laughs> he just did what he did so but, maybe he ain't mean to do it but. Oh, bro, it, it's, it's just it's Draymond. Like, if it was anybody else, I might have like it was still like I still would think you meant to do it, but I'd be right. like, I hear you out. 
Bro, you just choked Rudy Gobert two weeks ago, bro. I'm not hearing that you just accidentally clocked Nurkic in the face, bro. I'm not hearing that. I'm sorry, but anybody else, maybe. Not you, Draymond. You don't got the benefit of the doubt no more. Right. We just talked about it with Drew with um just how much more frequently this is happening. Obviously, the whole Jordan Poole incident last year, I think, had a big cloud over their entirety of that next season. Um, now, obviously, they fall out in the second round against the Lakers. Now, two incidents. We're only, what, 25 games into the season. You already missed five games from choking Rudy Gobert. So you really think about it, right? The Warriors have played, what, like 25-ish games? In 20 games, you've done two things that are so egregious the league has had to ex- ex- suspend you for. I'm about to say expel like a bad kid. <laughs> but, like, he had to suspend you for it. And this one is indefinite. Until what the league like deems you okay to come back. Correct. Really, when you think about it, bro, I think we gotta put some uh well not some. A lot of this is the organization's fault. Yeah, for sure. How are you gonna punch Jordan Poole in the face and it's zero repercussions, bro? No consequences, no nothing, just like business as usual. Like, oh, that's tough. Bro. I said it before when Drew was on the pod. You you can you can go from a strict parent to loosen up, you know what I'm saying? Loosen up but later on. You can't go from a pushover to oh now I'm sudden I'm the strict parent. Like you're gonna listen to me. You can't do that, bro. It don't work in reverse, bro. You let all this stuff go. Cause partly because honestly, it was getting the team riled up. It kind of benefited you a little bit. Like your team got riled up, you were the enforcer, blah, blah, blah. Even though it did cost you, you guys arguably lost a finals because of all this antics. Right. But you guys let it go. All right, cool. So now when the 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 reward isn't as great, like his play isn't as great as it was before, it doesn't like rile the team up the same. It kind of just hurts them only. You can't like tighten up now, bro. Bro, you like you let too much slide. It, it's over for that now. Kenya Martin was on Gilbert Arenas' show. I don't know if you peeped that. Um and he said they were talking about I think what he did to Nurkic. And he brought up what Zach Randolph I said years ago. He was, he was like, bullies in my hood get bullied. Like, bullies get bullied. Mm-hmm. He was like, bro, Draymond do this all the time. He's like, because nobody's ever punched him in his shit. That's facts. But it's yeah. like, it's true, bro. Like, he, do, he don't get no type of repercussions from the organization. Nobody on the court is ever going to go back at him. He got the craziest leash with the refs. He could sit out here and cuss a ref out in his face. Facts. But let somebody else slam a ball on the ground, they liable to get attacked, bro. Like, yeah. And I think Draymond is very – the one thing Draymond isn't is dumb. Draymond's not dumb. Draymond's a very smart person. Right. And, I like, I'm not saying that he picks and chooses all the time who he goes with. But, I mean, it's, it's he picks the seven the seven-foot Europeans or the little guards. I'm going to be honest. Like, it's – uh, it, it's a little selective. I say it's just a slight, slightly little selective because <laughs> Gobert ain't going to, Gobert ain't, he ain't about none of that. Gobert ain't going right. he don't care. Nurkic, he kind of closed line. I ain't going to lie. Nurkic didn't even have a chance. Like he didn't even right. have a shot. So I don't know. And then Jordan, obviously Jordan Poole, Jordan Poole ain't about to do nothing to Draymond. So. Right. So it's, it's a little selective. He ain't about out here punching uh, Juwan Johnson in the face of that like that. Yeah, no, nah. He ain't going after no uh, nobody else's enforcer. Yeah, exactly. Not that enforcers really are around like that, but it's just, yeah. That, I think, really does have a lot to do with it. And it's, like I said, bigger than just, obviously, people on the court retaliating. But, like, starts with the organization letting it slide for so long. Starts with Steve Kerr letting it slide for so long. Bro, I'm about sick of him, too. Because it's no way now, twice, two times this year, with the Rudy Gobert thing and with the Nurkic thing, you're going to come to the post-game press conference. Somebody asks you about it, which is a fair question. You're the coach. And you're going to be like, I-, I didn't see it. I didn't see the replay. Stop, bro. You got a court side seed. What are we yeah, talking about? It. They played it on the big screen, bro. Yeah, stop, bro. I'm not saying Forget I'm not all that. that. Forget all that. It's like six assistant coaches behind you. Every time there's a questionable call, all of them got an iPad. It's literally a coach designated to stare at the iPad and be like, uh, I think you should or should not challenge that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't see the replay, bro. Who are you fooling with that? Like, who is that for, bro? I hate, I hate, I hate that excuse. I didn't see it. 
You see everything else. You see literally everything. There's nothing you can miss, bro. I'm not right. here, bro. So no, it's it's so much bigger than the people on the court letting it slide. Like, as much as it is that Draymond needs to chill out, which obviously he does because it's no reason for you to be acting like this, bro, especially this far into your career, knowing the repercussions that it had in that final series, bro. The fact that it's slid for so much with the organization is it's inexcusable. It's inexcusable at this point. So, yeah. Punching bag needed, bro. He needed to be in there and some body shots, one-twos, some, as long as it ain't another player. Please. A teammate or an opponent. <laughs> Anybody. Next team I got is the Houston Rockets. This one was a little interesting. The one that felt the easiest – would be some road wins because they're one of the worst road teams in the NBA. Um, I think they're yeah, two and ten on the road this year and eleven and two at home. So one of the best home teams, one of the best road teams, uh, one of the worst road teams. Um, so they definitely could afford to start playing on the road like they do at home. But I want to take a little bit deeper um, and say that I think Rockets fans would wish for. Jalen Green to make that jump from a shot creation or even just a purely shooting perspective. Um, I think it's fair. We're in year three to say that he may not fully be panning out to be this like super high level score that he had the potential to be coming out of the G League night in the draft. It, it that's a tough expectation to live up to um and also it's okay if that's not what he turns out to be like he's still putting up 17 18 points a night this year like a high value second option the problem is the efficiency has gone down um it's the worst efficiency of his career from just a pure counting perspective like just the lowest field goal percentage he's ever shot so it's three point percentage he's ever shot um I think it's now it's below 33% on the season. It's the lowest effective field goal percentage he's ever shot. It's below 47% on the season. Um, like all three are career lows this year. And it sucks even more because this is the best the Rockets have been mm -hmm. in his entire you know stint with them in Houston. So you would want that friend to match as the team gets better you're getting better or even if you're raw stat you're not necessarily scoring more you're being more efficient with your touches but that's like going in the opposite direction um and so i'm not here to be in this big rush to be like ah they should have never taken Jalen green because i've started to see i mean that's been there especially starting last year with evan mobley making the defensive leap that he did but um it, I know Rockets fans are holding out hope that it might come around um, and that he can maybe get to, again, even if it's just 18 to 20 points per game, but he's shooting, you know, high 40s from the field, high 30s from three. That's a much more effective player and is more helpful to a winning culture than – not to say that he's against it now, but the efficiency has to get better in the long run um, for this Rockets team. So that's what I have for them on top of the fact they need to play better on the road. 100%. I like that because it, it definitely makes them a better player to have on a winning, like on a winning team rather than just a team that's just bad. And then you kind of have the free range to, you know, experiment a little bit. Nobody's really too worried about your efficiency but right. yeah i agree when you start winning like that stuff matters yeah because um, if you're not going to become the last thing if you're not going to become that super high you know tiers one of the best scorers in the league right you don't get that shot selection you don't get that amount of shots per game so you need mm -hmm. to the ones you get got to make them count or else it can very quickly become you're like an empty you know it's a shoot shooter chucker type guy Scott chucker yeah and that's not the mo that you want facts 100 percent. so my next team i have here is the indiana pacers um i think this one kind of stands out a little bit they're asking for some defenders because yeah. right now they are one of the best offensive teams in the league 
and also one of the worst defensive teams in the league. Mm-hmm. Anytime you watch an Indiana Pacers game, it's super fun. Don't get me wrong. It's run up and get run up and down, run and gun. Um, a lot of ball movement, a lot of threes. Harry's Halliburton, he's doing his thing, facilitating. They're up and down, but at the same time, bro, like they can't stop no one. Like they cannot stop anyone. You know what I mean? That's whether it's like guarding on the perimeter and the paint. Like they just they don't have the personnel to really defend people right now. So that's why I feel like um, some perimeter defenders or just defenders in general will help their team obviously be more of a legit like threat as far as like being an actual contender or taking that next step. Um, like I said, right now they're they're fun to watch, but as far as being serious, they do need some added defense because we've seen when you know they actually had to like lock in and play like just bring up like the in season tournament. They got mm-hmm. bullied by the Lakers in the paint. Like they had absolutely no answer, and even all their games this year, it just seems like they can't really stop anyone from doing anything. Like they're in a lot of high scoring games. Um, they can score, like I said, but they can't stop other people from scoring. And in the long run, that's not gonna be the recipe for like long term success. Yeah, they could get some good defenders. Like, even if their defense was just mediocre, bro, it could be like yeah. 17th best in the league. Like, that would go a long way pairing it with the best offense. Um, yeah, I I really do wish Rick Carlisle would at least throw some more minutes to Jarris Walker. Um, like, because they were, again, they're talking about going out and getting a big two-way wing to pair with Tyrese, but it's like, that's why I was yeah. gonna put in their wish list because they right. actually really wanted <laughs> right, like, but it makes sense, but it's like that's also kind of why you drafted him, yeah. And like if we're being real, like this is a playoff team, most likely, like, yes, yeah, a great story, there's a great leap for Tyrese, all of that. This is not a contender. No, so it's like, bro, there's nothing for y'all to lose timeline wise if you let him get some minutes, bro. Like, come on. He mm-hmm. only played in eight games this year. Uh, or maybe I'm, I'm tripping. Uh, yeah, only played eight games this year, averaged 10 minutes a game. Like, bro, let him get some run. He had a lot of special flashes um, coming out of college at Houston. Um, people tried to make the Draymond Green type comparisons because of his mix of size and playmaking ability and defense and all that. Um, like, that's the type of stuff that I would like to see play alongside Tyrese Halliburton. So, bro, start now. Just, like, don't turn into the Warriors where you got all this young talent and you just not using them. Like, don't develop on, them. bro. Right. Like, just give them the run. Obviously, so y'all in a way better situation. Like, there's no crazy expectations right now to win right now. Like, this is the time where you can go Experiment. and run. Right. Like, if it don't, I'm not even going to go there. But, yeah, like, go. Play, play the man, bro. <laughs> Put Jarris Walker on the court. Um, next team I got is the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, and this one is pretty simple because they have been hooping as of late, one of the hottest teams in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're on a nine-game nine win streak. Yeah, biggest in the league right now. Um, it's simple, and it's been the Clippers MO. Their Christmas wish got to be healthy in April. Facts. Simple as that, because if this what this team looks like, if they can stay together and stay healthy for a full playoff run, all that great look on paper might translate to court and we might finally get to see a healthy Clippers postseason and can put all that to bed about them always being hurt. And we never get to see a full Kawhi and PG playoff run outside of the bubble um, where they're healthy. So if they can keep them healthy. I know Clippers fans would be happy, and that's all you could ask for, bro. And I'd like to see it, bro. Kawhi's been playing great. James Harden's been playing great. They, they're they starting to look comfortable. Ty Lu said give them 10 games. We did rush to it because it looked really bad after, like, four or five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, credit where credit is due. He, you gave them the 10 games, they looking real good right now. And they haven't lost many games after they did those 10 games together, to be honest with you. Uh, so he knows what he's talking about. And I got a lot of trust and faith in Ty Lu. Um, so yeah, healthy, healthy playoff run for the Clippers would go a long way. Um, and I know they would love that if they could guarantee that for Christmas. Yeah, hundred percent, man. I would love to see them have a healthy playoff run that they choking in. And I would absolutely yeah. love that. <laughs> that would be great for me. But uh, but yeah, no, they they look great. I I don't really have nothing bad to say about them. They actually look really good. So um, my next team is the Los Angeles Lakers. 
And uh, <laughs> we got some things on our Christmas list that we oh we yeah need to, that we need addressed. Um, <clears throat> one, we can't shoot the ball, <laughs> so they're looking for some for some perimeter shooting slash scoring. Because honest, honestly, right now, I mean, Austin Reed gets a little bit of a punch. Obviously, LeBron AD do their thing, but like other than that. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's hit or miss with everyone else. Right. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not saying on the list is a new coach. I'm not fully saying that. Ooh. I'm not saying that. Listen, listen. I'm not saying that. <laughs> but just a tweak. A, a little. I don't even know. It sounds like right. you're not saying it, but you're not not saying it. I'm not not saying it, but <laughs> I'm not saying it. Let's put it that way. I didn't do a full 180 on Darvin. But Darvin, you kind of need to step it up a little bit. You, you know, ain't do the one eighty, but you about ninety degrees. I mean, I'm about ninety. Later. I'm about nine. I'm a right angle. I'm about ninety. But bro, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need you to step it up, bro. I'm gonna need you to fix something. I'm gonna need you to get some rotations down. I'm gonna need you to find some lineups that work. Granted, I think last was it last night. I believe it was last night. It was our first time we actually had our full team all together, including like Gabe Vincent and everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and the guys are still getting back from injury. You guys are still, you know, um, getting acclimated to, you know, the season and things like that. So I'm not fully, that's why I say I'm not fully 180 like a lot of people. Because right now, if you look on the media, Darwin is as good as gone. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I think, I think, I do think a little tweak there, just a little, just turn it up a little bit, Darwin. I don't want to flip on you, but just turn it up a little bit so it's not fully on the Christmas list. Um, but other than that, those, those are my main things right there. Hey. The Lakers fan said it, so I'm going to give you – you got the final say on all things Lakers on this <laughs> podcast. And one more thing. We need to beat teams outside of the in-season tournament, bro. In the in-season <laughs> tournament, bro, we're the best team in the world. Outside of it, it's like, bro, we just forget how to play basketball. It's Bro, annoying. it's because it meant something to LeBron. That was his March Madness, bro. He I, never was in the NCAA tournament. He got himself a ring. He the first player to be a 39-year-old NCAA champion. <laughs> I guess so. I guess it did mean something, but that's the reason why I had them lower in the power ranks. I'm like, bro, I in the tournament they look great. They I need to see it when it's not in the tournament for some reason. And then, yeah, unfortunately, I was unfortunately right. So I don't know, man. Still got faith though. Still believe we'll pick it up. It's so crazy because, and it sucks because I don't want to be this guy because people have said it for years. And I don't like, like, it's hard to question somebody's effort because it's like, that's not something you could just, you can't just see. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not in the locker rooms. I can't, I don't know what's going on behind. But it's like, bro, it's really nights nice where AD comes out and he's just like, nah, bro, y'all are not guarding me tonight. And then he mm -hmm. comes out and it's like, you know what, guys, y'all can guard me tonight. I'm cool. I'm chilling tonight. I'm taking a night off, man. I'm good. Like, bro. That switch don't need to ever turn off, bro. I'm not yeah. saying you got to be perfect every night, but the ebbs and flows are its <clears throat> crazy every year with him, bro. Yeah. One more. I do actually, I forgot I put this on here. I also have a big, a real big man. Because honestly, bro, 80 at the five is great sometimes when he could just bully people. That's just, one, not as good as him or just smaller than him. Mm -hmm. 80 at the five, bro. He's just not. Like, and it, to me, I feel like it makes him, it puts too much on his plate sometimes. Like, he's a great defender. But, like, that's part of the reason why he's so inconsistent offensively because he has so much on his plate. And at the end of the day, bro, he's just not the guy that can carry all of that, bro. He's not – he's just not that guy. So, to me, I feel like we had – like, we were at be at our best when he was at the four. Granted, that's not how a lot of teams play in the NBA now, but it's what won the Lakers a championship before. So, it's true. it doesn't really hurt to try it. So, that's another thing I, I say would also be on the Christmas list. It's a good point. It won a ring already. Why and not we do can't it again? shoot. Let's just bully every. Well, we couldn't shoot in 2020. And we just locked it on defense and bullied everybody. Might as well try it, bro, because AD looks great when he's playing against Miles Turner. But <laughs> when Jokic or B come in there, it's like, that's a real center, bro. I don't, and I don't even blame him. He's not a center. So it's tough, man. Yeah. <sighs> The next one I got here is the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, and if we had recorded this a couple of days ago, I probably would have just said their Christmas wish would be to get Ja back. Yeah. But Ja is back in a big way. What that reporter say? He's still him? <laughs> he still might be him. <laughs> game winner in his first game back against the Pelicans. 
Um, look, I, I think for Christmas, if the Grizzlies fans could make a wish, honestly, a little win streak because it's not impossible. It's a tall task, but it's not impossible for this team to get into the play-in. They're 7-19 and 19 right now, but from the, the 10 spot, they're only, what is this? Uh, they're six and a half games back from the 10 spot. That's a lot of ground to make up fair, but we still in December. It's still a lot of basketball to be played. Mm-hmm. They're going to get Marcus Smart back hopefully soon. Um, you know, obviously they just got job back. They may potentially be able to get Luke Kennard back uh, a little bit later as well. Um, Brandon Clark potentially could come back mid February, so it's like this reinforcement's coming. You're gonna get a little boost, no boost bigger than getting job back. Mm-hmm. They string some wins together, mess around. All they gotta do is make it to the playing tournament, makes it so much easier. All you gotta do is make it to the 10 seed, bro. Yeah, you make it to the 10 seed, it's all fair game. You get into the playoffs. And John Moran is John Moran. We see him give everybody a tough time in the playoffs when he was healthy. So that's all. I would keep it cautiously optimistic for Grizzlies fans. Put on your Christmas list, bro. Just a little win streak. Keep you in striking distance. Mess around getting to the play and anything can happen in a, a winner go home environment. Bro, when they start giving fans on Twitter access to media press conferences, bro. <laughs> That's a crazy question. I had to like I read it and I was like, nah, I gotta hear it. And I watched the <laughs> clip and I was like, Yo, bro, nah, bro, this bro. can't be no reporter. <laughs> it, bro, the fact that because you know when you ask the question, you don't name drop. He said, Who do they think is better? He said, Man, Halliburton, bro. He said, What's bro from the Knicks? Brunson. I said, Yo, bro, who's what Josh stand account is this on Twitter on the press conference, bro? Cause he's he bro, he sound like a, just guys talking at the barbershop that don't know ball. He said, "Man, Halliburton, bro, what's bro from the Knicks?" I'm like, "What? This no, is a you, reporter? I'm surprised. I'm supposed to believe you a basketball basketball reporter. You can't give me Jalen Brunson name. He's not prepared. <laughs> it was bro from the Knicks. He said, "Cause I know twelve still him." I'm like, "Bro, who is who? Who did they give the mic to, bro? That interview killed. Like that question killed me, bro." Like, there's no way they're just giving bro. random guys from Twitter press conference access, bro. I'm not hearing that. Yeah, that must have been some, like, Twitter contest or something, bro. They had to be. <laughs> fan <laughs> access to media, media, <laughs> media credentials, bro. There's no way. There's no, no way this guy's a, a news reporter. I'm not hearing it. That It was funny, though. That just made my day when I saw it. Yeah, that's hilarious. That just was too funny, but. You, you still him. You, I know I know 12 still him, but, like, man. He's in hoop, man. Halliburton, bro. Like, don't name drop, bro. You're not supposed to name drop. <laughs> nah, oh, my funny. gosh. But, man, oh, uh, my next team, <clears throat> excuse me, is the Miami Heat. Um, And for this one, is a little bit interesting. Um, I could have went a lot of different ways with this one. What I wanted to say is on their Christmas list, and I don't want people to take this the wrong way, but I just put a, a real – number one option and this is not like a knock against jimmy butler like i'm not obviously he's a great player i'm not saying he's a bad player they obviously went super far with him they literally went to the finals with him twice but like twice yeah yeah you're right but like i don't think he's gonna give him over the hump i really don't i really think they always stay in this little like heat culture grit and grind doesn't matter what seat we're in we're gonna make it far cinderella run we're the eight seed made to the finals but like bro if you look at all these other teams He's not better than Jokic. He's not better than uh, Giannis. He's not. He's just not better than a lot of these top guys that, all the, that these other top teams has. Even though he beat Giannis, so I guess I can't really throw him in there. But still, like, <laughs> but still, I just feel like, and we kind of got into this when um I believe we were doing like, I forgot what the segment was that we were doing. It was like panic or not panic or something like that. And I basically mm-hmm. was like, I'm panicking for the Heat because they're not panicking because they always feel like they're good. Right. Like I just I just don't feel like it don't matter what they do in the regular season to me, I feel like they're just never really gonna get over the hump. Like granted, Bam is a playing great, like he's been really aggressive. Tyler Hero has been playing great ever since he's been back. But personally, I just don't feel like it's enough. And I feel like they're always gonna be in that. Like we're gonna be tough. We're gonna get in the playoffs, we're gonna win a playoff series, we're gonna win we probably win a couple playoff series. But I just don't feel like it's gonna be enough for them to get them over the hump. 
So my Christmas list for them, I guess, is more of a long term thing, but mm-hmm. it's to kind of get like a number one option. That's fair. I can see the reasoning. I don't know if I agree with it just because it's like to get that close to the finals twice, like it's hard to want to be like, nah, you need another guy. Like that's once you get that far, it's like you just gotta you, you gotta tweak something around the edges, right? You just need it. You feel you have all the ingredients, you just was missing like a little little bit of the but sauce bro, or something. In either of those finals, did you ever feel like they had a chance to win it? No. That's that's what I'm saying. Like I granted, I feel like they can get far. Like I feel like they can get to the Eastern Conference Finals to the final. I never against the Lakers. Oh, soon as with the Heat one, I was like, oh my god, we got another chip. What? That's light work. <laughs> as soon as they beat uh the the Celtics, I was like, oh, Jokic about to get his first. Like I never feel like they had a chance to win it. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. don't get me wrong, it's an accomplishment getting there. I'm and like I got I said I don't want people to take it the wrong way. Like I'm saying, Jimmy Butler isn't like a great player. He isn't that guy. He literally got them two two finals. Like you have yeah. to be great to do that. But I just feel like getting them over that hump is just a different animal. To be fair, though, I do also feel like you could have taken any of the last four teams in the East last year. So Boston, Boston, Philly, um, or Miami and New York. I'd taken Denver over any of them. That's right. The way that they was playing. Um, I'm trying to remember who was the from the bubble. It was Heat Celtics Celtics still, right? Yeah, and then Lakers. Who was in the Western Conference Finals that year? Why am I blinking? Was it Nuggets? That wasn't, it was it, Nuggets. I say, was it Denver? Yeah, yeah it was the Nuggets. I don't, I don't want to go too far back in revisionist history on short notice and try to think about if I would have taken the Lakers over all those teams, but it's so tough. Have, it's you know, tough, you know. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's tough. I get what you mean. Like, it's a fair argument, though, because he is not the traditional. Like, when you look to all those other top tier contending teams, they have like a guy mm-hmm. who can go and light up scoring wise every night, especially in the postseason and in the regular season. Jimmy just don't do that in the regular season. He don't. He yeah. just he just rises to the occasion in the postseason. So it is tough because you do have to always go through the regular season. They always do look that little bit of fraudulent, right? Because they not, they just he don't elevate his game until we get to April. Uh, so it's fair. I, I understand it. It's just I don't know if I get with it because it's, it's tough to want to be like you got to make a change. We, we was there. Y'all was there twice. No, I get it. I I get it. I know. I definitely understand what you're saying, but I also feel like bro, that's the reason why they wanted Damian Lillard. You know what I'm saying? It's a reason why true. I the name. So, I don't know. It's just tough. That's just how I feel about it. And, again, like I said, it's not saying, like, oh, you need to trade Jimmy. But I just feel like they just don't have the legit, legit shot at actually winning it. They can definitely get there. And that's an accomplishment in itself. But winning it, I just feel like you need that guy there, unless you have just a dominant overall team. Let me ask you this. With how Bam has been playing this year, with how uh, Duncan Robinson has been playing this year, he's been hooping, adding stuff to his bro. He got some rim pressure now, like <laughs> gets downhill. Um, how Hero's been playing. Uh, also, guys, shout out Jaime Jaquez has been playing. Facts. Like this team, if you threw Damian Lillard onto this team, would they be the best team in the East? Obviously, it's a crazy hypothetical, but with this exact team, well, it depends on because they would be missing some people though. They'd be missing like. I think Hero will That's be gone. Fair, yeah. Um. Would Hop? Would Hop make? Would, in this scenario, is ha- is Hawkins still there? Hawkins actually would probably be gone too. Because that makes it. Yeah. You know that makes it tough. Dang. For the sake of the scenario, let's just say, what? Let's worst case scenario. It's Dame, Jimmy, Bam. Let's just leave it at that. Are they the best team in the East? Celtics still got KP. You said in the East or in the league? East. Celtics still got KP. Um, it's definitely a conversation. I definitely, you know, I mean, before the season, I mean, in the off season when he was rumored there, we all was like, if he goes there, they're, they're probably the favorite. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Next team I got keeping it in the East is the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, easy one. 
Christmas list, bro. Just give Giannis the game ball. Why we? <laughs> bro, come on, that man his game ball. He just That's hit this franchise funny. record, bro. <laughs> that, but yeah, what was it? What was the reason? Didn't the rookie get his first bucket or something like that? Yeah, Pacers rookie guys for he made a free throw. That was his bro, first. Yeah, game. Bro, give me my ball, bro. What are you talking about? It's multiple game balls. Like, come on, everybody, everybody get a game ball. Just make everybody happy, bro. Come on. If I'm honest, I want my nah, bro. I want my game ball, bro. I don't care about this rookie <laughs> that made a free throw. What, what are we talking about here? So, uh, but yeah, all, all jokes aside, all seriousness for the Bucks, um, similar trend to uh, all these teams that are great on offense and lacking on defense and get a little bit more specific with theirs. They need a better point of attack defender. I've been saying it uh, since they really got on track with their offense. Um, it came and we saw it in the end season tournament game against Indiana where they are just incapable at really stopping people on the perimeter at times. That was not the case when you had Drew Holiday. Yeah. Drew Holiday, the loss of Drew Holiday, I think has been even more impactful than I would honestly say any body in the NBA community was expecting it to be like everybody knew how much he did and how he's one of the most underrated uh, players across the league because of his impact on the defensive side of the ball. And it's not always the raw counting stats. He's not necessarily racking up a ton of blocks or steals, um, but it's how he really can take on the toughest assignments, especially from the guard spot um, and do his best to neutralize that. Obviously you bring in Damian Lillard. It's the right move. Their offense is humming, but their defense right now um, is they have the 19th best defensive rating in the NBA. I talked about it a bunch of times, but typically championship teams, you minimally got to be top 10 in defensive rating. And realistically, you have to be top five in defensive rating. Just historically, that's how it's shaken out for the last, whatever, 20, 30 years of NBA finals champions. Um, they're always to the, you know, near the top of the top of the league in defensive rating. So it's tough to win in the playoffs if your defense can get exposed to that level because of how much the game slows down and how much it becomes a half court game versus, you know, typical regular season basketball. So they could find themselves a way to get a better point of attack defender than no disrespect to Malik Beasley and you know Jay Crowder, if they play him more, but like they, they need a little bit of help there on that front. Completely 100% agree. Could not have asked for a better thing on your Christmas list, to be honest. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my next team is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, another team, great record, looking great, playing well. Um, I just put, honestly, deep playoff experience. I just put that because, like I said, they're playing well right now. I believe they're still the best defensive team in the league, if not one of the best defensive teams in the league. Um, they're playing great. They're able to be some good teams. Um, Rudy Gobert is playing great. He's the DPOI right now. Um, I just put some deep playoff experience, especially for a guy like Ann, who's still young. I believe he was. He still was, obviously, in the playoffs. But as far as, like, Having this team be like a serious, real, real contender. Granted, they're still like they're still a contender. They're a great team. I'm not saying they're going to get to the playoffs and they're going to be frauds or something like that. But at the end of the day, when it comes to some of these teams you're more familiar with, when it comes down to these playoff series, I feel like a lot of people would still pick some of these other teams. Obviously, like the Nuggets or like just any of these other teams that's been there before. So mm -hmm. I just feel like some deep playoff experience would kind of do them a little bit, you know, do them a little bit better. So I think that's what I put on their Christmas list. That's a good one. That's a team that I was like, I don't know what I would necessarily give them if they have been in my 15 list. Like I was trying to think. So they're playing great. Right. When teams are playing good, it's hard to want to figure out what you could add to them. But that's a good one. Like they could definitely benefit from even if they don't get it done this year, going into next season being like, OK, we've been there. We know what it takes. Yeah. I might have I might have just cheat in all these and be like every team I'm be like they need Kevin Durant. I'm just gonna add in something crazy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they need a top five player. I'm just adding in for all these teams. Uh the next one I got is the New Orleans Pelicans. Um, and this one is a little interesting. Um, but for their wish list, I just put one word and it's consistency. I feel okay. like the Pelicans this season and it, it kind of embodies how they've been through the last couple of years. And obviously they've dealt with the injuries and all that, like putting all that aside, 
When this team is healthy and playing right, they look great. They like Zion looks unstoppable. Bi is playing great. We know we're Herb Jones is an all defensive player. Alvarado is great off the bench. Trey Murphy's one of the best role players in the league. Like they have so many pieces. It's the the ebbs like the night in night out. Like where does that go? Yeah. Like to go from being like all right, go leading into the end season tournament. It's like okay, you get a win against the Sixers. You beat the Spurs, then you drop one to the Bulls, then you beat the Kings in the first round of the end season, the knockout stage of the end season tournament. Then it's like it leads to that Lakers game where we're hyping it up. We're thinking it's about to be this great game. Zion, no show. They look like a completely different team. Then they come out of that game, go on a nice little stretch. They beat the Timberwolves, the Wizards, the Hornets, the Spurs. Ja come back, give them 38, game winner for Rusty. Off the couch, mm-hmm. and y'all lose to the Grizzlies. Obviously, they're with Ja, they're better than their record, but it's a seven and 19. Or there's at the time they were a six and 19 team, and this is Ja's first game back. He hasn't played in since what April? eight months, right? Come on now, like the consistency has got to get better, not just with Zion, but with the team as a whole. They've got to get a consistent identity that they can lean into. And that's not to say that you're not going to drop games. I don't want to sound like I'm that guy, but like, this is a team that they just consistently, I don't know what Pelicans team I'm going to see when I turn on their games on league pass. Am I going to see aggressive Zion? Am I going to see BI shot creating? I'm going to see a fast paced offense. I'm going to see dudes locking on defense. Or is like, am I going to see a lackadaisical Zion, a, He's looking lethargic. Their offense is like sputtering. It's like so heavy and just on CJ shot making and BI shot making. And those shots aren't falling. It's just like, ah, whatever. You know, they got to get consistent. So that's what I would put on their Christmas wish list. I like that one a lot. Cause I like the easy one was just to be like, oh, yeah, them to stay healthy. But I like, I like that one a lot. Cause you're definitely right. There's times where you, it can be two completely different teams on any given night. So I like that. Yeah. Um, I for the for the well my next team is the New York Knicks and I honestly want to see if you agree with me on this one. I put on their Christmas list a trade partner because Julius Randle's playing good. Mm-hmm. He's playing he's playing really good right now. Some really good basketball. N- now would be the time because you know come playoff time <laughs> that's going out the window. So, I mean, you have a guy who's been absolutely hooping in Jalen Brunson. You have solid – like, the Knicks team is a good, really good team. Like, I love yeah. the pieces that they have on the team. Um, and when Julius Randle's playing good, like, if he can guarantee me that he's going to play this way come playoff time, I'm like, all right, fine. Just, like, ride it out. You know what I mean? See where, you, see where you guys can go. I don't think they're just, like, one of those teams we talk about that's, like, solid, middle of the pack, but they're, like, not going anywhere. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. I don't think they're going to win the, the, the championship. But they're a good team, you know what I mean? If I can guarantee Julius Randle plays at the all-NBA level that he plays with in the regular season. But I just know that it's coming to it. When that playoffs come around, he's going to absolutely disappear. So I'm like, bro, if he's hooping like if he's hooping like this now, I don't know. I, I'm not a GM. I'm not saying it'd be the, the right move. But I'd say I at least consider it. So I honestly just wanted to see if you kind of see where I was coming from. No, I, I get what you mean because we, we did have those discussions during the playoffs last year. Um, and coming in, especially to the start to the season, was one of the worst shooting starts to the season in NBA history. Yeah. So the question marks have been there with Julius. Knicks fans, obviously, they're extra and over the top, but they have a right to feel some type of way about Julius. Um so I definitely see where you're coming from. It's super tough now uh, because with the injury to Mitchell Robinson, which at first was only going to be a couple of months, and now it sounds like it might be the whole season, uh, which is super tough. I know he just had surgery, but I don't know if it didn't go well or whatever, but that's what the latest reports are. They just applied for a, whatever a injured player exception to see if they can open up another roster spot. It's super tough because Julius Randle now be would be the leading rebounder on your team. And obviously you can't really replace what Mitchell Robinson does on the glass, especially on the offensive end. But to get rid of both of them would be like, ah, yeah. that's hard. That's tough. 
Um, but no, nah, I definitely I see where you're coming from. It's it's a valid thing to to think about and consider. And look, Knicks fans, they probably crazier than that. They they might have had everybody but Brunson on a trade <laughs> trade away wish list. Get them yeah, out of here. Real. Any right. bad game. If you have a bad game, you're up out of here. I, I just put that up here because we talked about when it was playoff time. We we're like, bro, like can't trade him now. His value is mad low. Who's gonna trade for him? And it's like, oh, he's playing well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Something to think about. It's a it's a good segue into my next team, which is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Mm. And uh on, on their wish list, I have y'all sitting on all these picks, you sitting on all these young players. Uh you're playing phenomenally. Shea Gilgis Alexander is going to be an MVP finalist. He'll probably finish at worst top five for the award. Maybe he actually did they did their first ESPN straw poll of all the people that have votes on the award. He had the third most first place votes behind Jokic and Embiid. I'm um, not mad at it. So with how well he's playing, with how well Chet is playing, really this whole team. Hey man. Mess around, throw some of those picks out. It's a guy like Lord Marketing on the market. Lord Marketing would fit perfectly with this team. Mm -hmm. The spacing he would provide, he's not going to get in SGA's way. It's another guy who can, you know, have some level of self creation. Another big, lengthy guy to put on the court, seven footer. Like it gives you flexibility to play him alongside Chet as well. I think you go, you consolidate some of those picks. Maybe you got to throw in a young player or two, a Trey man, whatever, you know, some of the young guys on the bench. Um, and I think you can go out and make a, a reasonable splash. I'm not saying you got to go in and change your whole team overnight, but just add some talent, bro. The team is already playing well. This is how you take it from they're a legit team to, oh, this is a contender. So make that move. I think now is the time. Y'all been sitting on it for – literally years at this point. Um, so do it. And, bro, you can throw Giddy in there, too. I've seen people start to get out on Giddy because obviously not just the off-the-court stuff, but just he might not – like his lack of shooting sometimes hurts the mm -hmm. team. He's just – it is what the reality is. Bro's a 31% three-point shooter. Like he's going to have value around the league. Um, so it, it's, it's options for them out there. So I, I think they should explore that. I agree. I like it. I like the Lori marketing. I've seen he been <clears throat> like in trade rumors. So I think that'd be a really good <laughs> fit for him. Hey, yeah, listen, they got all the picks, <laughs> all the capital in the world to actually make some type of big move. All right. At this point, I mean, you might as well. Cause like, I know you guys are a young team. You guys still have time, but like, you're good now, you know, like, you never know how long you're going to be good. You just go for it. You never know. Right. Especially you got a, a guy as, as great as SGA. So if I was Sam Presti, bro, I'd be calling other GMs and I'd be like, bro, just let me know what picks you want. Like, let's make it happen. Yeah. Cause you could, bro, they got all the capital. They can get a, a big guy, bro. They can get a big name guy, bro. That fits for their team. They just got to go. And they have, it. they have to start trading these picks away. Like, y'all do not have roster spots for all these guys, bro. You just must sit on them. Right, we're y'all. When when a lot of these trades happen, it's like that's so far in the future. We're getting close, about to be twenty twenty four, bro. He's yeah. about to start conveying. Like Facts. you gotta use it or lose it, bud. Like Facts. So yeah, hopefully they make some big moves. That'd be really good to see. Yeah. Uh, sh sh my next team is the Orlando Magic. Um, and kind of like what I talked about with the Timberwolves, so a little bit lesser degree, but I just put experience and and also some three point shooting because they're a terrible shooting team. But I put experience, uh, mainly experience for their young guys, their Paolo, for Fran for Franz. Um, because right now they're a good team, obviously still one of the best defensive teams in the league. But they're a playoff team. But I just feel like right now, when it comes down to like later in the season in that playoff time, you're not really picking them to beat any of them. Like they're not gonna make crazy noise. Like I feel they're gonna be good. They're a good team. I don't think they're gonna make crazy noise. But I think experience as far as getting that playoff experience. And as far as um, Paolo and Franz development, along with some of the other young guys they have on their team, I feel like that'd be good for them. You know what I mean? Because right now mm -hmm. they're not in a position to where, like, they got to win anything. They're not really expected to do much now anyways. They're kind of playing with house money a little bit. So I feel like they get some experience under their belt. Um, their guys step up. Their guys get even better because, they're, obviously, they're still young. They still have a bunch of time. 
I feel like that would really be good for them. I like that. I like that. I like that. My next team I have is the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, and I think if you were a Sixers fan, you probably are banging a drum, Christmas wish list. You want Joel to get a back-to-back MVP. Mm-hmm. And it would be rightfully so. The man is averaging more points than minutes right now, which is That's ridiculous. Absurd. <laughs> and it's even crazier because he don't even be playing in the fourth quarters. Like he hasn't, he's I think sat out, I think, eight or nine fourth quarters this season already. They played a lot of bad teams. He whooped up on a lot of bad teams, but look, he dropped 51 on a number one defense in the NBA last night. So I was just about to say, yeah. <laughs> can't say much to that. Thanks. I have an interesting one. And maybe uh, you let me know if I'm being a little bit too too harsh on it. I said, if you were a Sixers fan, you probably would wish that the whistle that Joel gets in the regular season somehow made its way into the postseason. Okay. Because his whistle would be crazy. He'd be flopping. They'd be calling it. But the numbers back it up, okay? The last two seasons, right, his points per game have had – in 20, uh, was it the 2021 season? Um, it didn't drop off as much last year. Obviously, he was averaging 33 points in regular season, only averaged 23 points in the playoffs. He averaged this is almost two less free throw, three less three uh free throw attempts in the playoffs than he did in the regular season. Um, <clears throat> that style of basketball. When it get, when the refs start to allow a little bit more contact, all that flopping and all that, bro, like that ain't it. That is not it. And again, you let me know if I'm just being too harsh because it's tough to watch. Like even watching the game yesterday, he had some moments where it's like he's going in, he's initiating the contact, but somehow he ends up flailing away. Mm-hmm. That to me is like they got to We got to do something about this, bro. I felt the same way about any player who flops and gets it like that. Like, and that's not to say that Joel doesn't get fouled Mm -hmm. because he does. It's the manner in which he sells it to make it excessive, you know, because there's people who, and everybody flops. It's just the level that makes it so hard to watch. So I think that's fair to put on their list to some extent. Um, Also, I think more shooting would help too. Um, to, to add to the spacing because, I mean, it's it's already difficult enough as it is to trap Joel, especially this year with how good of a passer he's been. This is his best season. This is the best he's ever looked as a passer in his career. Mm. Um, I think Nick Nurse has, has made that an emphasis for him to really grow in that area of his game. But uh, to add even more spacing to that alongside with Tyrese Maxey, like the one-two punch that they already are, is just like it just gets more and more of a nightmare to try to scheme up how you're going to stop him in the regular season, then especially come playoff time. So, more shooting, I think, is the easy answer. That playoff whistle that definitely would help them get over the hump. Yeah, no, nah, if I'm a Sixers fan, I, I definitely want him to get that playoff whistle, but I mean, we've seen that 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 whistle always stops for everybody every superstar that plays like that right um unless you're austin reeves for some reason because i ain't gonna lie i'm not gonna be honest last year bro when he was playing in the regular season i was like i really hope he's not a fraud come playoff time because he he kind of plays into that like go to the free throw line game a little bit too Mm -hmm. and somehow he was still getting that whistle i guess he's just the best but yeah a lot of superstars even like james harden that was a lot of the uh people's problem james harden come playoff time because he stopped getting that playoff whistle and mm-hmm. then, you know, he had his playoff struggle. So, if I'm a Sixers fan, I definitely want that. As a basketball fan, though, I don't want that. I don't want it in a regular season. I don't either because you've said it before. You were saying, like, listen, it's crazy how Joel Embiid is the MVP right now in a tough watch at the same time, which is Those, nuts. It shouldn't coexist like that. It shouldn't no. be possible. The MVP is like, bro, a guy that you should want to turn on TV every time he's playing, whoever he's playing. So, right. Yeah, as a basketball fan, I really hope it's not like that because, one, I hope it doesn't translate and other people start getting that playoff whistle because then everybody's going to be playing like that, and it's it's annoying to see. Um, And I also, I just feel like I don't want him to get that because I want him – bro, he's too good. He doesn't need that. Like, he's too that's good of a what player. Really, that's what really gets me. You're too good. You're too dominant. You're too physical. Too skilled. You're, too. Right, you're, and you get fouled. There's other mm. – look, Giannis gets fouled. 
People, Giannis shot 30 some free throws when he had the 60 point game. Yeah. People weren't complaining about the free throws as much as they do with Joel because he's not out here selling the calls to the extent that you are. Like I said, everybody, you got to sell a little bit. Yeah. That's a reality of the situation. I used to hate when people would be like, well, Michael Jordan didn't flop. Well, if, th- if that was a thing, if he could have got that whistle, I promise you he would have because he wants to win games. 100%. And that's how you, those are free points, free throws. He would have done it. The issue is just the except, like the over the top, you flying all over the place, you on the ground all the time. You you should be throwing people to the ground. People should not be able to be putting you on your cheeks like that, bro. That's what gets me. You're too good for that to be happening to him. 100%. So, yeah, I just feel like he's too good. So, as a basketball fan, I hope he continues to not get the playoff whistle so we can see him actually take over in, in, in ways that's not just foul baiting. You know what I mean? Because I feel mm-hmm. like he's definitely skilled enough, definitely good enough to not even need that in the first place. So, right. yeah, I agree. Uh, my next team is the Phoenix Suns. This is obvious. <laughs> a healthy big three. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, real. it's nothing you could say. We barely see. I don't even remember. Have we seen them play all together? I think they played, what, one game? One game, and then Bradley Bill rolled his ankle. Like, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> it's tough, bro. Like, you, you guys just can't stay healthy. And honestly, that's the problem that we talked about with, um, with teams that's constructed like this. Mm-hmm. Bro, one guy goes down, y'all are not the same team. Because, like, you know, you had to strip a lot of your bench, a lot of your depth to even get the three stars on the team. So right. anytime at least one of them isn't there, you're not you're not a good team. You're That's a lot of people in your rotation on minimum contracts. Yeah, yeah. So this whole, like, I don't know, man, just all in. We're going to be super top heavy. I just, I don't know. To me, it just never was a way to build a team, but – I'm a Suns fan. If I have anything on my Christmas list, it's to definitely get KD, Devin Booker, Bradley Bill, all healthy, all playing at the same time. So they can at least get some type of chemistry all together, bro. Right. Because that, that, that was the whole deal with KD last year. He came in and then got hurt. And then like some of his still was like getting to know how to play with his teammates in the playoffs. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Yeah. They need that experience now. Like people underrate how much like it don't matter how good all three of those guys are. I got to get some time under your belt to, to make a deep playoff run, at 100%. least comfortably. 100%. Yeah, I like that. If I would have had the Suns, that would have been the same thing. I would have get all three of them on the court. Next team I get, we're winding down to the last couple here, is the Portland Trail Blazers. Um, and I've got another kind of out outside the box one. Uh, and this one would be if I was a Trail Blazers fan, I would wish – that we keep the media and just the general pressure low on scoop. I like that. Know how it is in this day and age. If a guy comes in and he's bad, that that B word, that bus gets thrown around real loosely for Mm -hmm. no reason. And not to say that people are necessarily doing that to scoop, but I've seen this movie before. If you don't come in... Sometimes it's really, yeah, if you don't come in and start hooping, if you're average and you're that high of a pick, ah, they get ready to call you a bus. Early, too. Right. So I think if they can just wish that they keep the pressure low, keep them off social media. He's been playing better as of late, uh, which is good to see. But keep it low. It's no rush. There's no expectation for this team. And he's like 19, bro. Give it time. Relax. Thanks. And that's not even for Blazers fans. That's Blazers fans hope for the rest of us, bro. So chill out. <laughs> that would be on – if I was a Trail Blazers fan, that would be on my, my wish list. Just let him find it at his own pace. There is no rush. This team is not being a contender anytime soon. Facts. That's the biggest thing. Like, would you rush him for what? If he's a star now, what? Yeah, still the one of the worst teams in the league. It don't matter. Anyway. Right. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Uh, my next team is the Sacramento Kings, and I put under here their wish is a third star slash Keegan Murray leap. So mm. I put that in here because one we talked about, I believe, um, in the offseason, we we're like, all right, cool. What could this Kings team be if you added just another guy in there? Not like a superstar, nothing crazy, but just added another guy in there. Um, preferably, obviously, in the forward spot, but they didn't make a move. 
We're like, all right, cool, whatever. You know, we've seen Keegan Murray start hooping um, in the summer league. We're like, all right, hey, maybe Keegan Murray might step up. I've personally seen the way Mike Brown talks about Keegan Murray. Like, he, listen, like he has the potential to be one of those type of guys. And obviously, we've seen flashes. Like, I believe he would. Well, he just dropped like 40 something like a couple of games ago. He did. He had uh, 12 threes. Exactly. So, I mean, he has the capability. So, I just think that, you know, with the team that's already as good as they are, they already have two all NBA caliber guys with De'Aaron Fox playing the way he's playing to really make some legitimate noise and actually be like a legit contender. You're going to need another guy to step up. And I feel like that guy really has to be Keegan Murray. So, I feel like if I'm a Sacramento Kings fan, that's definitely what I'm wishing for on Christmas. Hey, I, I agree. I think that I like Keegan Murray a lot, bro. I, I like do too. Watching him in the, like as a rookie in the playoffs do what he did last season, like I feel like that doesn't get talked about enough, bro. That is rare for a rookie to be in a playoff team's rotation and playing like he is, especially not like I, I, let me not cap because he was a four pick. I was about to be like he was the most highly touted guy, but it's like he's not coming into a team to be the guy, like he's a complimentary piece. Yeah, I feel um, you. And he just plugged and played so well for that roster so early on. So, um, yeah, I, I like Keegan Murray a lot. I think that might be the the way for them. Just like, let's keep seeing how he continues to grow this season. Because um, I'm trying to think. I, I don't know when Sabonis' contract is up, but I feel like they have a little bit of, of time, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Next team I have here is the San Antonio Spurs who are sitting at 4 mm. and 22 on the season. They are lucky that the Pistons are as bad as they are cuz they ducking a lot of the a lot of the smoke right now. They going under the radar. <laughs> their, their their lost streak was neck and neck with the Pistons and it just nobody nobody nobody, nobody want to talk about it cuz the, yeah, right, <laughs> the Pistons one was like one or two games longer every time and then they finally were able to snap it um it's probably been a couple of weeks at this point um, against the Lakers. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Like uh, I just, I'm not having fun, bro. <laughs> I'm just not, bro. <laughs> it's tough. Um, but for the Spurs, for their Christmas wish, if I was a Spurs fan, my Christmas wish would be just a point guard. Mm -hmm. I don't care if that come in the draft. I don't care if that come in free agency. Need the point guard of the future. I'll be the first one to say, I said I understood what Pop was doing with the putting Sohan at point guard and letting him play, and I still defend that there are were benefits to it. People are trying to say that it's hindering Wemby's development. He's hindering his game. Yeah, the clips look real bad when he's getting missed on open cuts or he's got guys sealed and like the ball just does not find his way to Wemby. I get all of that. It's tough. Maybe not. Maybe it probably did go on longer than it needed to this. So hot point guard experiment. What I don't understand though, is Trey Jones is on the roster. Like he's leading the team in assists per game off the bench. Like, we, we we want we want to try him starting at some point, mm -hmm. Pop. Like I don't know, feel like that could probably help. Um, but it, either way, he, neither here nor there. They need to find a point guard of the future. I don't think that's necessarily Trey Jones. There's some guys in the draft that's being talked about. Um, there's going to be linked to guys in uh, free agency like crazy. I see. I saw a Trey Young in a Spurs jersey on Twitter. That was crazy. That's wild. <laughs> uh, I think it was because he uh, – I think they showed one of the clips of him running down for a lob and he didn't throw it to him. And Trey Commenton was like, oh, that's a free lob. <laughs> so like, immediately – Jersey swap. Turn it, right. Um, but could you imagine, bro? Ooh, man. Trey Young, I think, might be the best lob thrower in I the league. So. Him, yeah. and, him and Harden. Hey, Lou uh, – I mean, Luke is not as much as a lob Chris thrower. Paul's still in the league. He, you know what I'm saying? Elite lob thrower. Light. He was the mayor of Lob City. That's what I'm saying. He's still, he's still in the league. You yeah. don't lose that. I'm just That's saying. true. He don't so got the he... opportunities, though, in Golden State. <laughs> yeah, who are we throwing it to? Looney? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he, at worst, one of the best lob throwers. Pair him with seven mm. foot 7'5 guy who's 
when is he not open for a lob? Just put it on the rim. He might go get it. Facts. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> Spurs, wish list. Got to get a point guard. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Okay. My next team um, is the Toronto Raptors. Fair warning. I don't watch a lot of Toronto Raptors games. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Mainly because of t- the thing I have on the Christmas list. They need a direction. They need a way to go. They need mm-hmm. some sort of path to go. Whether that be, listen, Trey, all the times they had freaking OG in trade talks. They had Pascal in trade talks. I feel like they've had him in trade talks since for, for years, it feels like. But ever since they championship. I swear. And it's like, bro, he's never, he's just not going nowhere. <laughs> but I just feel like they need some sort of actual direction because they're one of those teams that we were talking about with the Bulls where they were just like, bro, they're not horrible. They're damn sure not good. <laughs> they're just like, eh. Like, I, right. I don't know what to say. They're just there. Like, they need some sort of way to go, some sort of direction. So I feel like if I'm a Raptors fan, that's what I would wish for. No man's land is the worst place to be as an NBA team. And they are. Facts. They done pitched a residency. They got a crib and everything set up there. Yeah, bro. They invented no man's land, bro. <laughs> um, the last one I have on my list is the Utah Jazz. And this, again, ties back to what I said earlier. Uh, l- l- let's move Lori. Let's get Lori all here. Move him. Get some young assets. Get some, some draft picks, whatever it is. Reset your timeline. You look like you got a – well, I, you know you got a good one in Walker Kessler. Obviously, making Team USA after his rookie season. One of the better defensive bigs in the league. Um, Keontae George has looked great this season. Um there's a lot of development there for him, a lot of opportunity, a lot of potential. You move lower, you get some pieces, you get some draft picks. All is good in Utah. There's no pressure. Yeah, I just go and get another lottery pick this year and continue to build and develop through the draft, which is what you got to do when you're a small market team because let's cut it. Not a lot of people are trying to go to Salt Lake City. It's Sorry. just a fact. I've never been to Utah. I ain't trying to disrespect y'all. If y'all are listening and you're in Utah, <laughs> that's look, that's just what the streets are saying. They say that the you know the scenery, the mountains are beautiful, but when it comes down to it, bro, who and people aren't trying to be in Utah like that. So you got to do it through the draft, and that's going to be your best way. So got to move, Laurie. One hundred percent, I agree. So my last team—that was your last team, right? Yep. Cool. My last team is the Washington Wizards, and for them, I have on their wish list a real team. <laughs> Because they're not serious, bro. <laughs> like, bro, watching Wizards games, don't get me wrong, I'd watch like bits and pieces because I can't even bear to watch a whole game. They're not a real team, bro. You're just not a serious team, bro. Like, honestly, if you told me before the season, bro, somebody would have a 24 game losing streak, I would bet so much money it would have been the Wizards. Facts. So much money it would have been the Wizards. But they're just, like, not seriously, bro. They're not serious, bro. Jordan Poole is, like, the definition of Shaq in the fool this year. Like, he just <laughs> does – Like I swear, he goes out there, he's just like, bro, I'm just – it's whatever, bro. I'm just hooping. Like, I got paid. I got a ring. I'm just hooping. I'm just having right. fun. Kyle I respect Kuzma, it. I respect it, too, because he's, like, he ain't got nothing to prove. It is what it is. Right. Kyle Kuzma, he just right along for the ride. He's the Robin to the Batman of the foolishness over there. And they just don't have – they don't really have nothing, bro. They don't have nothing going on. So, I just think, honestly, I'm a Wizards fan. I'm with you for a real team in a in a good draft because this rebuild is going to have to – it's going to have to get something good going right now because right now y'all don't really have no type of attraction over there. You're going to be in contention for that number one pick. For sure. You no, know, Bilal looked good. Hey, you know what I will say? Denny looks good. He looks – he looks mm-hmm. like he's a he's – a, a good solid role player right now for them for a team that, like you said, yep. is definitely a bunch of foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> but it's bad, bro. Yeah. It's like so bad. It's funny though. And no, it is hilarious. Um, I'm also it's I'm looking at speaking of Utah, they're they're beating Detroit by two right now in the third quarter, bro. Bro, oh my god, bro. <laughs> I part of me want like I want them to get a win so bad. But I think it's funny if they lose. It'd be hilarious. Bro, if they lose to a starting lineup of Chris Dunn, Colin Sexton. I got to click on this dude's name. Hold up. Simone Fontecchio. I forgot his first name. Wow. 
John Collins and Kelly Olenek, who right now has 22 points, five assists, got four steals. Bro, if y'all lose to this team, what did we say earlier? We got sent him to the G League? Yeah. <laughs> y'all, it's got, Adam Silver got to step in. I don't know what he's going to do, but he's got to step in, bro. This is un, unbelievable. Sick, bro. It's sick. Absolutely wow. sick. Um, but that's it. All 30 teams, they done inked it, and they done put they, they wish list. They put it in an envelope, stamped it. They send it off to the North Pole now. Only Santa will know if they're going to come true or not. Yeah. Only Look thing we him. know for sure. Is Draymond got that lump of coal in his, his, his stocking? For sure, bro. He ain't getting nothing for Christmas. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going I'm to do the NBA trivia now. It's not going to take too long. Uh, it's NBA Christmas theme trivia. Okay. So, got some <clears throat> good ones here. Three of them, just like last time. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it in the same order of what I think is easiest to hardest. So we're going to start with the first one. I need you to name the top five players in total points scored on Christmas Day games. LeBron. Number one, 460. <laughs> MJ. Not on the list. You're not serious. There's no way MJ's not on the list. He's not on. I think this is the top ten I'm looking at. Not in the top ten. Kobe. Number two, 395. Steph. He is not in the top 10. Scorers on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. G big market teams. <laughs> hmm. This is interesting. Okay. Larry Bird. Larry oh, Puka just caught a touchdown. I did. Um, yeah, I see it. It was <laughs> so, so bittersweet, bro. <laughs> I know. Larry Bird is not on the list. Okay. D Wade. D Wade is in the four spot, 314. Mm -hmm. So you're missing, you're missing three and five. Okay. 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 Shaq. Shaq is number seven. Oh God. Great. Um Okay, Tim Duncan. No, 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 no. Forget I said that. That's the Spurs. They don't get yeah. no. They don't get no yeah. love. <laughs> no, no, Timmy D. Yeah, they don't. They don't get no love. Uh, -uh. James Harden. James Harden is number six. I yo, I thought it was gonna be a crazy pull right there, but I'm like, you know what's funny? I'm thinking of that that Christmas commercial where they was they were shooting <laughs> yeah. in the Jingle Bells. That's what I'm thinking right now. The so five, got, the five spot is a Harden teammate. Chris Paul. Mm -mm. Oh, Russ. Not currently. It has oh. been a Harden teammate. Dwight Howard. No. Damn. That, that's the next oh. guy you think of? Oh, I'm bugging. I'm thinking KD. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting about OKC right now. Dwight Howard of all, the, all of Harden's teammates. He's about to go to Luis Scola next. Yeah, Devon I was about to name him. Pat Bev. <laughs> <Right>. Monte <laughs> Eunice. <laughs> hey, man. Got to get the diamonds in the rough, man. Yeah. All right, you so got we got... One left, and this is an old guy. Okay. Uh, and I mean, it wasn't. I'm just Kareem. I don't know. I'm just saying it right now. Just a saying. Kareem teammate. Ma uh, Magic? No. Oscar. Oscar Robertson is okay. at number three, 377 points. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to lie. If you didn't say old. I was never going to guess Oscar Robinson. Just off of like, I just said everyone in the modern day before I said Oscar Robinson. Yeah, no, but hey, I, it was going to be bad. I had to, I had to shorten that out. <laughs> this next one, let me, hold on. Maybe I'll go to this other one because low key, this one might be the hardest one. Eh, yeah, I'll do that. So nine players have had a triple double on Christmas Day. I just need you to give me five of the nine. And if they've done it multiple times, it's like it just counts for the same. So on Christmas Day, triple double. Mm -hmm. Bron. That is one. That's the cheat code answer. That's the right. one. He always on Christmas. OD. Um triple double on Christmas. Hmm. 
Nah, that's not a good one. I don't think KD. I don't think that's. A, I don't think he had a triple double on Christmas. But I'm gonna just say that one. No KD. Magic. No Magic Johnson. Oscar Robertson. Oscar Robertson has done it four times. Russell Westbrook. Done it twice. So that's three people. I got to name one more. Two more. Or two more. Hmm. D Wade. No D Wade. Who plays on Christmas? Oh, this is hard. Why am I blanking? Scotty Pippen. No. You it, it's some it's big names still left up here. Okay. Bird. Mm -mm. Re I'm talking recent big names. Still Luca. Not Luca. Jokic. Jokic is up here. So that's four. Okay. Honestly, bro, I'm just I didn't know if there was disrespect. I didn't I don't remember how many Christmas Day games he played. That's but. fair, yeah. Okay. One more. Mm hmm. Hmm. Harden? Harden is mm -hmm. the fifth guy. Okay. Okay. Other good answers John Havlicek. Wasn't that in yeah, my life? Billy Cunningham. <laughs> uh, Draymond. That's a and good one. Kemba Walker had a Christmas Day triple double. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Would have never guessed that. The Draymond one. With some time, if he was like recent player still playing, I think I might have came up on that one eventually. Yeah. The last one, keeping it Christmas themed. Can you go <clears> through <throat> the top five players who have scored the most points on Christmas Day in a single game? So the highest scoring Christmas Day games. LeBron. Not on this list. <laughs> wow. My cheat code didn't come through. That's crazy. No. So in a single game, most points on yes. Christmas. And I'm going to preface it with the most recent player on this list did this in 2002. So Wow. Okay. A lot of old heads up here. Elgin Baylor. No, but his teammate twice. Well, actually Wilt. two different teammates are on this list. Whoa. Whoa. 59 points in 1961 in a double overtime game <laughs> against the Knicks. Jerry West. Jerry West is also on the list for 47 against the Knicks as well in 1963. Larry Bird. Larry Bird is not on this list. So you've got the number two spot Jordan. and the number four spot. No Jordan. I'm surprised. Does Jordan not play on Christmas, Jordan bro? Jordan stinks, bro. What is this, bro? This guy's a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um... Okay. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Charles Barkley. No Barkley. You got one more guy from the 60s, a guy from the 80s, and then the 2002 guy. Clyde Drexler. No Clyde. Is the, the 80s one is the toughest. Uh, the 60s one is, I'd say the 80s one is the toughest. The 80s one, he's a, a Knicks player. Walt Frazier? No. Walt Frazier. John Stark. John Stark, no. I don't want to get the Knicks guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Patrick Ewing because you wouldn't have said it was tough. Yeah, no. I and he's a, he's a name you would know, but it's just like your mind would not go there. I ain't even going to try it. I'm not even going to okay. try it with that. All right, we're going to go 2000. It's all, It was 2002 what happened? 2002, Christmas Day against Detroit. This man played. This man went for forty six. Dirt. No, he also apparently averages the most points on in Christmas Day games. He only played in three of them, but he averages forty three point three points on Christmas Day games. God damn. Hooper bucket. D Wade. Not D Wade. Similar type of you know player profile though. It ain't. It ain't Kobe. Nah, Kobe played not, more not than three Kobe, games. Not Kobe. Ah, uh, okay. Two thousand and two okay. against 2000. Detroit for the Orlando Magic. T Mac, Tracy McGrady. Okay, okay. T Mac, T Mac was All really right. a bucket. Um, Forty six of them things.
I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna get the. And you said sixties, man. Let me <laughs> yeah. try. Hold on, hold on, let me try with the six. I'll try. Is it? Is it like a name I know? It is a name you know. Sixties, sixties is like Wilton, them, right? Hmm. Um, got, an, got an iconic free throw. What is his name, bro? The <laughs> underhand guy? Yes. I forgot his name. I don't know his name. I know you're talking about. <laughs> Rick Barry. Okay, yeah. I, must say, I forgot yeah. his name. I know you're talking about. That's from 2K. <laughs> yeah. Last um, one. I got to get the this, 80s guy. Yeah, 60 piece against the Nets, Bernard King. Oh, that's a tough one because I should have known that, actually. I should have known his name. Yeah, uh, 60 piece in the garden. I think that was the most points somebody has scored in the garden up for a long time. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's cool. They got like the NBA puts out this like random fact list of like the uh, NBA Christmas edition for every single year. Like this is the 76th year they're doing NBA games on Christmas Day. That's tough. That's kind of crazy. Facts. The Knicks have played the most games on Christmas Day with 55, which gives me an easy pivot to our last segment, which is predicting the Christmas Day matchups in the NBA, and we're going to go in order, starting out with the first matchup of the day, which so happens to be the Knicks matchup. The Bucks are going to New York, going to be in Madison Square Garden. They are playing in the 11 o'clock spot on the East Coast. Milwaukee at New York. Who do you got? Um, Give me Milwaukee, man. You said it's in Madison Square Garden, of course. In MSG, yep. Same time in MSG, man. Give me, give me, uh, give me the Bucks. I'm gonna take the Knicks. Okay. And I've got some interesting logic as to why. None of it is basketball related. <laughs> <laughs> Becky Hammond came on NBA Today to, and said that the Knicks don't have their one A guy uh, because Jalen Brunson is too small. Which I was watching it live when it happened. Everything she said is right. She's going to catch a lot of heat for it, especially from Knicks fans, but she makes a very true argument. Guys, his size do not like very rarely. Do you ever see teams win championships with guys, his size as the best player? That's facts. It's like, really happened. He's six two. outside of Steph and Zeke. That's pretty much it. That's I mean, it. AI, like, got, the AI win, got there, right? Didn't get it. Chauncey Billups has a finals MVP, but nah. right. That team was built on their defense being so good. Mm -hmm. So she makes a very good point. But all of that, I think, is to say that Jalen Brunson is about to turn up on Christmas Day. Yeah, <laughs> can't really go crazy. Like, like, <laughs> get like a 50, 50 piece to, the, to Giannis and the Bucks. So I, I I'm going to go with it. the Knicks in this one. Okay, okay. I respect that. I respect that. I just think Dane time, MSG, lights, you know, light, bright lights. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to rock with my guy. That's fair. I keep glancing up at this Pistons score, and they are still losing. And it is – I'm starting to get anxiety at this point, bro. <laughs> y'all can't, can't lose this one, bro. This is not the one, bro. Uh, next game, following up that one, we have the Golden State Warriors going to the defending champions, Denver Nuggets. Uh, who do you have in this one? To Nuggets. <laughs> Light Seems work. easy. I mm. will take the Nuggets as well. Even though, and I we talk about the Warriors, we even mentioned it, bro. That shot by Steph, that might have been one of the highest arcing shots, like or, or three pointers, I should say. I've seen people do crazy moon shots on like full court, whatever half court heaves, right? For just being a straight up three pointer, bro, that jump went off the screen and came back. That was beautiful. I ain't gonna lie, it looked beautiful to see. It hit zero zero rim, like that jump, the net, crazy. It was perfect, bro. It was perfect. Yeah. Yeah, he just he just got the Celtics number, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, bro, he's their kryptonite, bro. Like, <laughs> they can't do nothing with him, bro. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, easy. I'm taking the Nuggets as well. Like, what are they gonna do with Jokic? Come on now. Nothing. That's baby food. Yeah. Next one, following that one, iconic matchup. Celtics going to the crypto. I almost said Staples. Going to crypto, taking on the Los Angeles Lakers. I got the Lakers in this one, and this is not a biased pick because you might think it is. These are the type of games we win, though. 
You know what I mean? Like this is the type of games, light the bright lights. You know what something, I mean? Like, something more to something play for than play just for. a regular season game. <laughs> they cheated us last year with the whole Tatum foul Brown on the layup. <laughs> These are the games we win, bro. We gonna pull this one out. Watch and see. We could probably gonna lose two leading up to this one, but it don't matter. We are gonna win this one. I see it. I see the logic. I'm still gonna lean with the Celtics here. Um, I'm trying to see. I ask, is Chris Stapps back? Yeah, yeah, he wasn't playing he the other day. He oh, okay. yesterday. I think he played what? yesterday. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I'm sure. I'm thinking of the Warriors game. Yeah. No, so yeah, he's back. He played against the Kings. Um, with Chris Stapps back, I, it's, I think it just might be too much, bro. But like you said, look, we talked about it earlier. If it's that Lakers team with AD playing like he plays, that shows up, that in-season tournament Lakers team, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely winnable. As I said, we uh, win games. That's a game we're not supposed to win, so we're going to win it. <laughs> that's how it works. And it's a game fair. the Celtics are supposed to win, so they're probably going to lose. It's fair. Very fair. Uh, next matchup we got going into the late afternoon here. We have got the Philadelphia 76ers heading to Miami and taking on the Heat. Who do you have in this one? I'll go with the Heat. I'll go with the Heat in this one. I don't know why. I just, I just got a feeling the Heat going to pull this one out. I like that as well. I'm going to take the Heat, too, for the same reason. It's just this feels like a game the Heat going to win. Yeah, yeah, it's a feel thing. I don't know. I just I, I, I like the Heat in this one. And it's in Miami, and I will say, I feel like they have one of the more underrated crowds, bro. They crowd mm -hmm. gets into they crowd, it. They crowd be jumping, especially like, I mean, obviously, I know it's not playoffs now, but come playoff time, that crowd be active bro all right so i think you know crowd gonna be lit it's miami christmas on the weekend you know i mean yeah. like it's a vibe i'm i'm i'm, I'm with it 100 percent. and I, I know what i'm getting from bam i'm excited to see the bam joel matchup mm -hmm. in prime time so I, I like that i lean the heat this one too um last game of the day the dallas mavericks are heading to Phoenix to take on the Suns. Who do you have in that one to wrap up Christmas Day? Mm, I like Luca in that one. I'll go Mavs. I'm leaning the Mavs too in this one. Uh just I don't know, bro. Luca, Luca prime time. He just he, bro. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't even have stats necessarily to back this up. So maybe I'm just off base. But it just feels like this is the type of game where Luca is about to just uh, to another level, you know. Yeah, fuck. Because like, he's like be, that on regular nights. So regular nights right. he's forty. So right, I would right, I wouldn't be stunned. This is a forty point triple double. And who who on the Suns is checking him? That's my main thing. They not guarded him at all, bro. So give me Luca. Goodwin, maybe like I, he trying to my uh or no, I'm sure I'm trying to say Kamara, but he on uh, the um temper uh, Trailblazers. So it's like, I, give me Luca. Give me Luca. Right, give, right. me the, give me the Mavericks. Um. But yeah, I like it's a good slate. It's a nice slate of games. Mm -hmm. Um, I like all the matchups. I think all of them will be, and all of them should be close games, except for I. The like, only one that I, if I had to pick one of them to be a blowout, it really would be the Golden State Denver one. Like, yeah, I believe so. I just could see, especially because it's in Denver too. I could just see that getting away from them and Steve Curtis throwing the towel. Mm -hmm. Facts. That's gonna do it. That is going to do it. Christmas Day matchups are right around the corner. Um, this is when some people start locking into the NBA season. Some people don't watch until Christmas Day. That's they true. Feel, all right, so it's when it's starting to get a little bit serious. The NFL, you know, playoffs are around the corner. It's getting to that time of the year where it's about to be the all-star break, and these games, go, I mean, they all count for the same, but the ones after the all-star break, they mean a little bit more. So mm -hmm. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. The storylines. Pistons are down by six, bro. Bro. Oh, my God. This is sick, bro. They can't, Surely they can't do it, bro. Oh, my God. And I need Kay Cunningham to score two more points for my parlay. Side note, Cooper Cup had dropped him two end zone touchdowns. Oh, I I love it and I hate it. Yeah. Oh, damn. They're, they're kicking the field goal. Damn. I need Kyra, man. Thank you all listening. I don't care nobody say. Sean McVay got Kyra on his fantasy team, bro, because he be giving them, them, them attempts. He just got hey. stuffed a little bit, but he be giving him a chance. I love it. Yeah. I definitely love it. And Puka is kind of eating. And I'm he little... is. I'm seeing it, bro. Like, oh, this is so bittersweet, man. 
I just need oh, Kamara to turn. I, one Kamara touchdown, and I feel, I'm straight. I don't care how much Puka do. I think I'll be all right in, the, in redraft. That's how I need out of Kyron, bro. And I need a lobby to kind of tweak. I love it. Got five targets, four catches, 40 yards. That's what, listen, he give me a tutty. Kyron give me a tutty. My night is, you know what I'm saying? I think I'm in, I'm in a solid spot. All right. It's interesting. If those of y'all listening, me and Dame are both playing each other in the semifinals of two different fantasy leagues. <laughs> so crazy, bro. And <laughs> both our teams have a bunch of the same players. So if Puka goes off, it's basically setting up one team to win in one league and the other team to lose in the other league. Because you like you literally can't just be happy for guys going crazy because you're probably playing him on. He's either on my team in the other league or vice versa. So it's bad, man. It's bad. If you had to pick one to win out of the redraft for the dynasty, which one would you rather win? Dynasty, because if I beat Beans again, I'm talk. I, I'm going to the group or crazy. All the uh. <laughs> All of y'all that vetoed trades, I'm talking <laughs> crazy. Y'all did all this to stop me and look where <laughs> I'm in <the> inevitable. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, bro, I'm gonna I'm get a chance. I'm gonna get a WWE belt and I'm gonna make a video, bro. I don't even blame you, bro. You got it, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You win. The, I ain't gonna lie. If you win either one of them, I feel like you could talk. Because if you win the redraft. That's another chip. Three of them in a <laughs> row, back to back to back. That is, that they was trying to discredit my first one like the bubble, like it was a <laughs> Like the bubble. <laughs> um, I ain't gonna lie. I want to win the dynasty the most. But if I win the redraft, bro, J.K. Dobbins, Mike Evans, Tank Dell, who else was out? Jamar Chase. Now, like, bro, I'm not supposed to be here, bro. <laughs> like, if I win this one, I'm not supposed to be here, bro. I'm talking crazy. So, Have you – have you – you watched any dynasty like uh 2024 type of videos? Not yet, but I will trust me. And I I started to tap in, and what I'm learning is <clears throat> I don't like normal, like just standard PPR, like fantasy redraft. It's people that you know you can listen to. Dynasty, I don't know, bro. People be every dynasty video I've watched, I disagree with so much of it because they value like. All right, don't get me wrong. Dynasty, like, yeah, youth is, like, great. Don't get me wrong. But, like, I feel like people will take youth over everything. Like, this guy can suck, but he's young. Right. So I take him over this stud that's 27. Like, right. Like, come on, bro. Like, people value youth a little too much to me. Like, in my head, the way I see it, bro, I guarantee I'll be able to trade Tyree Hill for somebody this offseason if I wanted to. I don't right. care how old he is. I, he, bro, he's the number one receiver, bro. I will move him if I need to. If like, you're going to move him, you have to hit my jack because I will trade you for <laughs> Tyreek Hill. <laughs> yeah, I, I got you. But I'm just saying, like, I, I just don't, I think people value stuff a little bit weird in Dynasty. So I don't know. Yeah. Man. It's a little weird. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to tap him, though. I watched a full three round 2024 mock draft. Three, <laughs> I'm lying. I'm dialed. I can't I respect even tell, it. I can't even tell y'all who I'm about to pick, but just know he listen, coming. Listen, my brother's down in Georgia right now. He gonna give me the inside scoop. My yo, bro, which who in college really like that, bro? Like, who really chill before I have to report you, bro. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm, I'm, I got the inside scoop. I got about the my sources is telling me, bro. Uh, no, oh my man, god, is that lava? I got lock in. Yeah, we got in this. I got lock in because <laughs> I got too much. I got too much in this game right now. <laughs> With that, that is going to do it for episode 44 of the Off the Glass podcast. As always, we appreciate the support that y'all have been showing on the YouTube shorts, on the Instagram, on the TikTok. Y'all been going crazy recently, so we appreciate that. Continue to like all those videos. Subscribe to the channel. Go ahead. If you're on YouTube right now, go over to the audio platform. Go ahead, follow the show, leave a five-star uh, rating, drop a review too. All those help out at some with the Spotify and Apple algorithm. Start pushing the podcast out to more people. We've been going crazy. I think the last month or so, we've had like 400 listens uh, between Spotify and Apple. And like 99% of them is literally just people clicking on. It's popping up in their Spotify and they're listening. So helps us out a ton. We appreciate the support as always. Um, the whole episode was holiday themed. So from us to y'all, we wish y'all a happy holiday season. Um, probably not going to be recording for a couple of days. Obviously, we're going to be out with the fam, as you should for holiday season. But we will be back after the Christmas Day game to continue to give you the best 
NBA content like we always do. As always, I'm Billy. That's Dame. And we out. Peace. Yes, sir.